girl, you were scandalous, and I loved it. Your show is the best, 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 best show on the air. The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> Woo! Everybody, welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. We've got a fabulous author coming in today for the Hour of Truth. Her name is Benildi Little, and she's got a book about hair. You know what? I got the book a few months ago. I don't ha actually, it's in my office. I have to go um, take it out of my drawer, but it, I thought it was very interesting. And so Benildi is going to come in and she's going to talk with us about her book and um, so on and so forth. And that's always fun when we have authors in. Also, the celebrities and their drama. Where do you want to go? Do we take it to Jennifer Lopez or Star Jones and some of the secret truths behind her marriage? Oh, Lucy Liu? Yeah, more Asian girls are speaking out. The, the more famous Asian women are speaking out regarding Lucy Liu's comments about um, not representing, you know, all Asians and whatnot. And Patty Austin, we're going to gossip about her. She's a legend. Demi Moore, Mary J. Blige. We'll be taking your phone calls at 866-GET-WENDY. Your faxes at 866-WENDY-FAX. Hang on. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Mothers at controls. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It is what it is. Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. One hundred seven point five WBLS, where the listening is fun and the winning is easy. Guess who's a thousand dollars richer today? Is it me? It's you. You serious? I'm serious. Oh my God! Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, twelve fifteen. You said it. You repeated yourself, and I heard, and I called, and I'm excited. It's the one hundred and seven thousand dollar cash guarantee. Something's gonna do me with this. Treat yourself well, love, and you should do you. What's the radio station? It's the home. One hundred seven five WBLS, the number one station. I love you guys. Hi, this is Babyface. This is Beyonce. This is Don King, and you're listening to the Voice of the Tip. <laughs> and proud to be a winner of the 2005 Marconi Award for Urban Station of the Year. Congratulations, BLS. WBLS. For winning the award. 107.5. WBLS. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that all introduce to you... The Queen of All Media, Wendy Williams. Hey, everybody. Oh, hey. Mm. Welcome to the show. Mm. So where do we start? How are you guys doing today? I see um, that young Jeezy has been ordered to turn over his financial records. Well, you know, I've been following this story as I've been following his... Um, his CD very closely in my car. It's, I, I can't get enough of this man's CD. 
So um, it's all interesting to me that, uh, you know, now he's making this money, but he's saying he's making $35 a day off per diem, and he's been paying all along $178 a month for his child's, uh, his son's child support. You know, his baby's mother sees what's all popping off now, the icy snowman, you know, the greasy rhymes, talking about, you know, money and, and underground DVDs and, you know, his financial records have already gotten out there pretty much to his baby's moms. You know, the street talks. Plus, you know, she can look and see. In addition um, to being ordered to turn over his financial earnings report. Yeah, because she's going after, uh, more, they say now it's more than $20,000 a month that she wants. But we use twenty as the baseline. Wow. Anyway, um, so, okay. So that all went down. There was a hearing yesterday. Yesterday. So I'm getting this news fast for you. Um, so he's turning over his financial earnings. Um, her name is Nicole Dykes. That's his baby's mom's name. And like I said, she's the mother of his nine-year-old son. And um, they want to scrutinize his, his uh, earning. Hell, I mean, $178 a month. There ought to be a law. That's nothing at all. So, um, you know. And no word on what the man is making, but he's denying now that he owns a mansion or even a house or jewelry or whatnot. So, you know, the next court appearance to determine the amount of child support Jeezy will be paying um, is actually scheduled for November 29th, November 29th. So keep that date in mind. I will, too. Um, damn. Well, Jeezy, you know, just do right by your child. I know, you know, baby's moms sometimes can be, you know, ooh, you're throwing it in your side and stuff like that. But clearly, $178 is enough. So, I, um, here, turn on all my microphones. I want to do a presentation for the studio. Damn, this is when I wish it was TV. So, nobody ever asked me, Art, how I'm doing today. But I'll tell you in just a moment. Well, look, before the show today, I walked 15 New York City blocks, which is like the equivalent to 150 miles. Check out how I was walking it. Wait, hold on. Let me close the door and, and get my costume together. Hold on. Hold on. I'm leaving part of my costume. Wait a minute. Okay. So watch. Wait, hold on. Give me, give me two seconds. Hey. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know why? I don't have thyroid cancer. I'm going to live. Oh! My Don Carrion 1982 is chilling in the freezer. I'm yes. going to live. Yes, yes. And yes. you could not tell me a thang as I walked down Park Avenue. Wow. Yes. Yeah. This is this is um. <clears throat> you know what I have on? I um. Davy Crockett. Yeah, well, you know what? Some people, like fashionistas, would understand if I just described it as very Michael Kors. You know the um, what do you call these hats? The trapper hats. <laughs> I got my furrier to make me one, and I couldn't just buy it, you know, off the rack because, like the rest of my body, my head, due to my hair clips and all the contraptions that I get going on to make my hair nice and big, the aquanet and stuff, I need my hats to be made bigger than the average bear. You know, and so um, he made me one and it's long. Um, what do you call this hair? Coyote. And it looks ridiculous, you know, and then I got on some big boots. So I'm six feet two. But the hat, because there's so much hair, you know, or six, excuse me, six feet three. I'm 5'11 with my flat feet, but I got on four inch heels. And then um, I have on some jeans and then I got on a, a big um, Norma Kamali. It's a vintage sweater. Actually, I got it from um a vintage sale that she had a few years ago and um, it's just big and woolly and I don't I'm not wearing a coat with it and then I've got lots of neck because you knew I had to get those five stabs in my neck this morning for my you know throat biopsy so I didn't want any freakish blood or anything showing and it's like big around the neck and then um, I topped it off with this hat and then some Gucci um, frames and so I said well this is what I'm going to wear God as I'm getting dressed this morning now, I might find out that I have thyroid cancer, you know, in which case this is the perfect outfit to disguise. And it seems like I'm happy because this is like a nice, happy outfit. But I could be crying behind my glasses or I could find out that I don't have thyroid cancer, in which case I keep a bottle of champagne um, in my desk, much like Fred G. Sanford. Remember? <laughs> yes. I, I keep a bottle of champagne in my desk. Um, thanks to um, Chic Luch. Thank you, Luch, for that. And, uh, and I said, and then this could be a happy outfit. And I could prance, 
you know, because my 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 um, the radio the radiation center was a. Uh, Oh, hell, I can't even remember what you call the place that I went to. Anyway, it's on Park Avenue, but it's like 50 blocks away. And I said, you know what? I could prance in this outfit if I'm going to live. So I pranced, right. and I'm going to live. But you do like the hat, right? Right on, look. I'm going to wear it on stage today at the Laugh Factor. I, I know about the hat, yeah. That's all we got here, right? Here. Yeah. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah. People were looking at me like I was crazy with the hat on, but it's not like I'm wearing it with the whole coat hookup. Right, right. Right? Right now. Do you like the boots? Yes. Yes, very, um, very nice. Well, thank you. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Clearly, he's at a loss for words. So, I very rarely do this, but sushi for everyone. Oh, that? Where does it come from? Look at it. Look at it. Where does it come from? Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Where the hell did that make her a screensaver? Oh, my God. <laughs> Somebody oh my made God. you a screensaver. <laughs> Who was that? Wow. I don't know how to do it. Oh, my it. God. That's terrible. Where do people go look at that picture? <laughs> they don't. This is our screensaver for the, just for the station in the studio here. <laughs> Who did that? Somebody made you a screensaver. Not the heroin chic picture. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look like I've been punched Whoa. in the eye. That's okay. I'm going to live. That's right. Wow. I'm going to live. So um, I'm going to start my drinking as soon as my uh, champagne gets gets chilled. Yes. Thi um, I was going to say thyroid for everyone for lunch. Um, oh, you, I see you have a little drink over there, too. Yes. Sushi for everyone today for lunch. Oh! <laughs> but no champagne. I'm taking it to the head right out of the bottle. Right. And tonight, the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience at the Laugh oh. Factory. Um, I hope to see, you know, you all there. Um, I'll be in the corner celebrating life. Yes. You, you know, I'll, I'll be in the corner. As you should every day, though. I do every day, but today is particularly, you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We're going to live. Tomorrow I have a CAT scan. It's a whole nother day. Oh, <laughs> it's a whole nother day. But today, if today I'm going to live. Yes, yes. <laughs> I got a little stick on my teeth. It's all right. You're going to live. I'm going to live. Yes. Who cares? <laughs> Do we have time to continue with the um, celebrities? Mm -hmm, yeah, because yeah, that hasn't softened me. We're going to finish off a few people today. Um, oh, you know Trinice from America's Next... I mean, um, American Idol? So she's joined the cast of Soul Kittens Cabaret, which is going to be a musical review. It's written by one of the girls, actually one of my favorite members of Brownstone. I barely remember Brownstone, but I do remember Nietzsche Gilbert. She was a really nice girl. And so Nietzsche apparently is producing Soul Kittens Cabaret, which is probably like the Pussycat Dolls. Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? Oh, don't you like that song? Yes. To wish your girl was a freak like me? Oh, don't you? When she sings, the music was to get out because we have to hear her sing. Oh, yeah. She don't sing that often, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to sing today. Look, I can hit a Mariah Carey. Because I was like, am I going to be able to eat and sing and stuff after this? Do you see anything? I don't see nothing. <laughs> and how low do you need me to take it? Because I can work both octaves. How low? Uh-oh, uh-oh. How low? Easy. How low do you need me to oh. take this? All right. How you doing? Mm -hmm. And it, the needles hurt, but you know what? Just like beauty is pain, health is pain too. Yes. But when you come through the other side, <laughs> thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> anyway, so um, the Soul Kittens Cabaret. Trinice is going to be a uh, part of that. They're in Atlanta rehearsing. Tweet is a part of it. Tammy Townsend, who used to be on that DJ show, Rock Me Baby. And Monifa oh. is also a part of... Oh, yeah, there you go. I'm Excuse sorry. me? Think about Fantasia. I'm oh, sorry. no, Monifa. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. They still both one of them names. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Soul Kittens Cabaret. Um, and you know who was also was supposed to be a part? Free from 106 and Park, but she never showed up for rehearsals. Free is MIA. I mean, what the hell is she doing with her career? She's a rapper. Like I said. Oh. Well, well listen, you know what? 
Shout out to Nietzsche Gilbert. Nietzsche, I know you're producing this show. I need you all um, to come through here because I like Tweet a lot. Trinice, I, I like her too. I've met her before. Tammy and Monique. I, I like Monifa. I've never met Tammy, but I am very interested in the Soul Kittens Cabaret because I think that this is going to be like the Pussycat Dolls, and I like the concept. Keep Wait it here. Minute. My oldest brother, he told me he had a really good surprise. The surprise was that he turned himself into a woman. <laughs> The Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS, where the listening is fun and the winning is easy. Guess who's $1,000 richer today? Is it me? It's you. You serious? I'm serious. Oh, my God, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, 1215, you said it, you repeated yourself, and I heard, and I called, and I'm excited. It's the $107,000 cash guarantee. I'm going to do me with this. Treat yourself well, love, and you should do you. What's the radio station? It's the home. 107.5 WBLS, the number one station. I love you guys. Thank you. All right, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience on WBLS. And it's a beautiful, crisp fall day. A great day to be here. Listen, you can look for the WBLS street team. Later on today, they're going to be at Fulton Street and Broadway in Brooklyn. Um... Or you can look for them in Manhattan at the South Street Seaport. They're going to have your chance to pick up tickets for, uh, to go to the Beacon Theater um, to join us for WBLS night later on tonight. Wow. Tonight is the stage play Cheaters at the Beacon Theater. Actually, they have a longer run than just tonight. But tonight is WBLS night. So when you see the street team, if you have your calendar free tonight, then ask them about um, those passes for the play. And the play, of course, is tonight in Manhattan. The Beacon Theater is the place to be to see cheaters. Thank you, L.A. Weight Loss, for helping me lose 17 pounds. L.A. Weight Loss is um, a fabulous weight loss program. You know, you do your own cooking. Nothing is prepackaged. Nothing is pre-measured, pre-weighed, nothing like that. You don't add water, you know, to food and mix it up, and all of a sudden it becomes something to not even tolerable to eat, like some other weight loss programs. L.A. Weight Loss <clears throat> is real food for real people. It really is. And um, I'm going to give you the telephone number, 1-800-448-TRIM. I'm a foodie. I like sweets. I like salties. I like the crunchies. I love the, the different textures in food. And oftentimes um, during the day, I find that I choose what I eat, not by necessarily the food itself, but by what it's going to give me. Like I want something salty and crunchy, or I want something salty and mushy, or I want something sweet and stiff, or sweet and soft so um la weight loss in other words the sweet and soft would be you know some yogurt fashioned like ice cream the sweet and stiff would be you know maybe a piece of candy um you know crunchy would be you know some chips you know low fat of course LA Weight Loss can walk you through it. I mean, there's there's a million different diet and weight loss programs out there, you know. And how does LA Weight Loss set itself apart from the rest? Consistency. They've been in business since 1987. Consistency. Millions of people have lost millions of pounds on LA Weight Loss. Consistency. They're not the ones going through bankruptcy. Consistency. It's LA Weight Loss. 1-800-448-TRIM. It's 1-800-448-TRIM. Shifting gears, let's talk about tonight. And the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience at the Laugh Factory. Artie, do you have your routine already? Yeah. What are you gonna What are you gonna joke about? What, do I, what is my shtick? Sex, of course. Oh. <laughs> Anything I talk about politics, racism, it all revert involving sex. It all comes back to sex yes. with Art. Yes. All right. Yes. Well, check Art out. He'll be telling his jokes tonight. Um. I'll be on stage. Hell, I might even do a routine. I'm going to live. Wow. I'm going to live. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Um, and, um, of course, Capone and yes. Ken Black yes. and all the comedians come through. <clears throat> be ready to have something to eat. Thanks to Ray in the House of Plenty Restaurant in Union, New Jersey. Um, be ready to uh, have something to drink. Don't forget to tip your waitresses. And it's um, all going down. It's every Wednesday night. The Wendy Williams Comedy Experience at the Laugh Factory, 42nd Street and 8th Avenue. Doors open up at 8 o'clock. And the show starts at 9 o'clock. Or 9.15. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's not a hard 
nine, and sometimes it's nine fifteen. As soon as you see these, please get drinks. I need you inebriated by the time I come. This in. is what I hate. People come in, and you guys really do. It's like yeah, you guys, ev- you guys eventually do get your drinks, and you're laughing. You're you're thoroughly inebriated by the time you know the comedians come on later on in the evening. But in the very beginning, like the mm, thank you, like thank you, Ramona. Candy Supply, <laughs> Jolly Ranchers. But when me and Art go up on stage, Art is the first person to go up, and then he introduces me, and I'm the second. Nobody's had a drink yet, and you got to get in the spirit of things. And for many of you, unfortunately, without a drink, you just sit there and stare, and it's terribly uncomfortable. The camera phones and stuff. Yeah, I just, you know, get just be cool, be chill. Get into the moment. I always get to the club early enough so I can, you know, toss back at least one, mm-hmm. you know, before I get on stage so that I'm feeling you when you're feeling, you know, me when I'm up there. And I'm feeling art. I feel you immediately when you get on the stage. I'm laughing. Ah! And, and, and that's what I go to. That's that's what keeps me going. When I don't hear nothing out there and they stare and I'm listening. Because they stare. You guys yeah. get more caught up in the staring than you do in the actual listen to the jokes to laugh. Art really does do a good routine. And I can tell you, I can tell you're feeling nice because when you walk up the steps, when you're approaching me on the stage, it's like you're looking at each step, making sure you're... No, I do that anyway. Oh, you do anyway? Oh, please. I'm, oh. I'm very frightened of falling. Oh. Oh, yes. Anna Nicole, when she used to have that crazy show of hers on E, that's one of the things that she talked about. Like, I can relate to that. I can totally relate. Because first of all, when you're tall, you got a lot of ground. And that's a big splat down there. It's not like I'm four feet 11 and, you know, I just fall. It's like a five-year-old falling over. You know, I got on heels. I'm like six feet three. That's a big distance between my teeth and the floor. <laughs> the impact alone is going to shove them down my throat. You know, and plus, I'm a, you know, I'm a big girl. My, my bones can't take a, a pound in like, you know, not like that. My heels can barely take my weight on them. So, you know, I'm very conscious of, you know, putting all my weight on my heels. I mean, look, they're little and spindly. Look at these little ones today. Have you ever had a heel snap underneath them? The, your weight? I have. You can imagine. I don't know what is in this heel. Maybe a piece of steel or what? Something. Yeah, because it's, it's if very skinny. It, if it cracked, I wouldn't blame it. I would blame me for, you know, what the hell am I doing wearing them? Right. So you walk on that part the most. Yeah, I walk on the balls of my feet the most. Okay. But, oh, I'm frightened to fall. Sober, straight, you know, sober or, or drinking or in the mall or at work or in a club. I'm, oh, I'm frightened of falling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So don't let the waitresses beg you to buy your drinks. Yeah, your drinks you guys, in get in the mood. Get in the spirit of things. Drink I, before you get there. Yeah, I was going to say, it's poor mental health to say this, but drinks make everything a little better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's very poor mental health. Oh, yeah. Magnata used to say that back in high school. One of my favorite teachers, Mr. Magnata. That's poor mental health. <laughs> but it's poor mental health to say, but there's five people in the room. Raise your hand if you think drinks make things better. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So maybe, you know, have a little drink before you get to the club, like Art said. Just a little one, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, drink responsibly. We don't encourage anything crazy from you. What the hell? Shout out to all the girls at hoodtopmodels.com. Oh. <laughs> I hope I've been helping you out with that website. It's a hot website, too. Yeah. I love the way your body feels. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Turn this up. <laughs> Hey, hey. I always want to be with you. Thank you. Wow. Let's take some phone calls or something. Yeah, okay. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Good. Welcome to the radio. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> crazy girl. I love you so much. Thank you. Wendy, I have a question. Okay. Um, how, what made you go and have a biopsy? What were the symptoms? William Rehnquist passed away um, of thyroid cancer. Wait, you went to the you went to the hospital because somebody else passed away. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but you know I have thyroid disease, so right. And it was time for an appointment. In about two months, it was time for an appointment. But hell, he passed away that morning um, when I woke up and saw it on the news. I called up my doctor. I said, I want an appointment. Lord. So he scheduled an appointment. I went in the next week. Uh-huh. And it turns out a little nodule that was in my throat had grown a bit. Oh, wow. Exactly, exactly, wow. exactly. Push the button, Art. Wow. I did. <laughs> and so then, no, she wants to hear wow. 
people can they hear us? She wants to hear wow, wow, wow. Wow. And so, wow. and so then I, um, wow. then he said, well, look, he, then he, you know, judged over my throat and stuff. He said, that, you mm-hmm. know, there's some place that I want, just some place that I want you to go. Uh-huh. And it turns out it was to get a biopsy. Okay. Yeah. So this was all based off, you know, William Rehnquist's passing, passing of thyroid cancer. Oh, wow. Okay, Wendy. Well, I want to live. I know that's right. We all do. Yeah. <laughs> Longer than uh, others. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, I love you, Wendy. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Um, hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hey, Wendy. How you doing? Uh, I want to ask a question. Okay. Go ahead. I want to know, will $2,500 buy me a nice fur jacket? Yeah. Demetrios? Yes. Uh, Wendy, this is really you? Yes, it is. Oh my God! I'm happy to talk to you. Good. Do, look, do you congratu- know? Congratulations. Oh, you're. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, How's your husband doing? Um, still clueless, but he's closing in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's nice to talk to you. This is my first time getting through. Well, thank you. Listen, the Demetrio brothers. Um, one's name is Bill, and one's name is Pete. Bill and Pete. And they are fabulous farriers. And okay. they, 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 their knowledge of fur is incredible. Okay. And they are on 30th Street, 30, 30th Street. Okay, because this is my first time buying, you know, fur. Oh, they're going to walk you right through the process. Okay. And you'll be able to get something nice for that. Okay, Wendy. And they have a lot of patience. Okay. All right, and that's in Manhattan. All righty. All right, good luck. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Um, hello, hi, it's Wendy. Welcome to the show. Hello, Wendy. Hi. Hi, this is Bimbo. Hi, Bimbo. It's been a while. Yes, Wendy. Wendy. Yes. Who was that cuckoo bit that you had on the radio last week? All I heard was cuckoo, cuckoo, <laughs> every minute. So, what was she talking about, having a baby with a rapper? I don't know. Some cuckoo bit. Just cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Wendy. Could have been me. <laughs> I have to ask you, Gallo listeners, your man listen to something. Okay, uh, I'll be what, ready for the dump button. Yes. Okay. What do they see in a damn transsexual? Why not be with a woman? I'm in the village. You know, I have a man now. Hey, boop deep I know you listening to me, boop, boop. Well, well, hold on, Bimbo. Okay. Wait, but a transsexual still has uh, the, the the male member. Right, but at the same time, they still have a non-inch, 10-inch, Wendy. Anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But a 9-inch, 10-inch, and a pair of double Ds? Oh, I could see the attraction for a man wanting to be with that. I don't be with a woman like that. Okay. jealous. <laughs> you know, she's telling me I'm in a village to have a toast some dug out God says it's looking hard. I'm not going to holler for me because you know I got me a man now. Hey, Bookie Bookie. <laughs> so, you know, um, my friend, go, you know, my friend Julius, she go, go holler. So I went over there. My friend Julius, how do you look at that? Child, I ain't going to even lie. If I was in his friend, I wouldn't holler at him either. Anyway, girl, <laughs> I went over there. I said, um, what's good with you? know, my friend over there, he went, I holler at you. Right. You know, get away from me, son. What, what is wrong with you in the village? Wow. What was wrong with you? Why are you? So, you know, I waited. I looked at him. You know, I studied him for about 10 minutes because, y'all, we can't so We like to, you know, study people. Right. So I'm, I'm looking at him. Next minute, I see a big old woman like you go over there at Wendy. A drag and, queen. Yes. Um, they out, out. Mm. I don't understand. This happened a lot. This is like you, a response. I, I know what you're talking about. Bimbo, Goose is telling me I have to go. Okay, I will call you again because I'm going to go with you to that um, A's gay thing, Wendy. I don't know what it's about, but I'm going to go with you there. So I'm going to call you again about that girl. Okay. okay. Bye, Bimbo. Bye, Growl. Everybody, this hour is brought to you by SWR, and it's 107.5 WBLS. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Woo, it's the Wendy Williams experience. Okay, so what were we talking about before? Oh, the Pussycat Dolls. Don't you think your girl is hot like me? Don't you? Don't you? Don't you? Okay. All right. So I told you all a few months ago that um, Patty Austin is the new face of Lean Cuisine. Or no, actually, I think it was a few weeks ago. Remember, I was telling you that the mother from the Urkel show was chosen to be the face. But when she went in and she got the job, she was like a size, you know, 18. When she came back to get the pictures taken, she's like a size eight now. They're like, you know, wait a minute. You know, you can't do Lean Cuisine now. You know, you lost your weight and stuff like that. And you didn't lose it with us. Well, Patty Austin's lost weight with Lean Cuisine. And so her spots are beginning to air the week before Thanksgiving. Patty Austin is the legendary singer. She is the voice behind numerous 
television commercial campaigns that you might not even know. I knew she was a big McDonald's singer behind the scenes in the early 90s and into the late 80s. I don't know what she does now. She can write a jingle like this and then sing it like that. So, um, Quincy Jones protege. Yes, well, she's Quincy Jones' goddaughter. Although it might not be real goddaughter. You know how we as black people are a lot of times, my you know, cousin. my cousin, my godmother, my godfather, you know, all like that. You know. Anyway, Patty's 57 years old right now, and she shot her commercial recently for Lean Cuisine, like I told you. And she's ecstatic to represent Lean Cuisine, the entree line. Um, I had a Lean Cuisine last night for dinner. They really are a fabulous way to lose weight. Lean Cuisine, as a matter of fact, was perfectly fine to be incorporated in with my L.A. weight loss lifestyle. I mean, you know, I can eat, like, real food, like, if I want to make an oven stuffer, you know, real homemade food and stuff like that. But I'm a busy woman. I'm a woman on the go. And Lean Cuisine fit into my lifestyle. And I could calorie count, and I was losing my weight, and so on and so forth. And so one of the great things about L.A. weight loss is that you can cross-reference other programs and get fat, fabulous results. But Lean Cuisine, she lost 120 pounds. She says, here's her quote, Fatty Austin no more. I've heard the jokes. <laughs> she is almost unrecognizable these days. They say Patty went from a size 28 oh my gosh. to a size 12. And she says the results of her losing weight on Lean Cuisine have gotten Joe Marie Payton fired. Joe Marie walked away with her $3 million settlement uh, from the Lean Cuisine Company because they never put in there a little stipulation about if she lose weight. But she, anyway, here's what Patty says about Joe Marie. Are you ready? Uh -oh. Joe Marie was right to sue because there was no stipulation in her contract. However, where I think Joe Marie was wrong is that she knew that she was doing a Lean Cuisine commercial that they hired her to do because of her weight. So to show up for the commercial shoot noticeably lighter than the weight that got you the job was silly on her part. I would have fired Joe Marie too. Her intentions may have been harmless, but Joe Marie let vanity get the best of her. She's lucky she won the lawsuit. See what um, Patty did was Pat. See Patty and Joe Marie were up for apparently these, this lean cuisine thing. They had already taken pictures of Patty at a size twenty eight. You know, so they have the messy pictures and now they have the thin pictures and so on and so forth. Um, and what she says about her own weight loss, Patty Austin, she says to wear pants and jeans again is so nice to fit comfortably in a chair, in my car seat, in a plane seat is another blessing. And um, they asked her about gastric bypass surgery and she says, you know. I did think about it. Carney Wilson and Al Roker inspired me to think about it. After 9-11 I near, and nearly being on one of those planes that crashed into the Pentagon. Because she was booked on the flight. She says she spiraled into depression and put on more weight. She says it took a couple of years uh, to muster up the courage to see a doctor about the surgery. Then in 2004, she decided it was time to do something. So she worked with a dietitian hired by Lean Cuisine. And um, that's how she's been able to lose all that weight. And she's maintained her size 12. And she's happier and healthier than ever. It's never too late, late to lose a gaggle of weight. Of course, to me, like after 60, I'm giving up. I don't care. It is what it is at that point. I'm eating what I want. And if I'm too heavy to get around by walking, then put me in a wheelchair. Yeah. With a tree. Yes, with a tray and a catheter. I don't want to get up to do anything. I mean, I want to live, but I, at that point, I, I really want to live on my terms. I want to eat what I want to eat when I want to eat. I don't want to have to be in the fight of weight anymore. I want to eat. I mean, I say that now, but I'll probably be, you know, just as conscious about it then. I want to eat. At what point in your life do you have the right to say, I don't want to diet anymore? Yeah, good for Patty Austin. I'd like to have her booked on the show. I would shout out to Elisa in the office, but she's in New Orleans oh. with her sister who was in law school in New Orleans and her sister was able to flee the situation like the day before Katrina hit. And so her sister um, had to muster up quite a bit of strength to go back and take a look at her apartment. And of course, she went to school at Tulane. I think she's uh, already been accepted to like NYU or something like that law school. You know, they one of those outreach schools that takes the students from devastation due to Katrina. But they went back to clean out her apartment today. So, um...
you know. So when she gets back, I'm going to ask her about booking Patty Austin on the show. Mm. Yeah. So next hour's advice hour. Um, I have nothing set up um, specifically from my standpoint. So, you know, I mean, I do have a plethora of your faxes and stuff. What did that sign say, Goose? How many seconds do we have? We have one and a half. Time. All right. Demi Moore's daughters, Rumor, Scout, and T- uh, Tula, I think that's how you pronounce your name. Huh? Tulula? They're all going to be on the cover of Teen Vogue. And the girls have, well, they strike quite the picture. Demi is all for the girls being on the cover of Teen Vogue. It's going to be for the December, January issue. And here's what Rumor, the oldest, Rumor is now 17, Scout is 14, and Tulula is 11. Rumor says, I trust my mother's judgment in terms of what I wear. We always ask her opinion before we go out. They love her mother's fun sense of fashion and her mother's vintage collection. And Tulula goes on to say, she's been collecting clothes forever. I love to go in the storage bins and play dress up. The girls' um, fashion icon at this particular moment, Sienna Miller, Nicole Ritchie, and Kirsten Dunst. They all love how they they dress. And... um, Apparently, they're very happy with their new stepdad, Ashton Kutcher, Kutcher, who's only seven years older (laughs) than Rumor, Demi's oldest daughter. (laughs) Keep it where you got it. Thanks. It's windy, man. I got slayed so well. Made me do things I don't even do to my husband. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Artie, you tell Miss Wendy, you're not going to run me out of town. I'm staying right here in Philadelphia, and you need to respect that. It was an embarrassment to me. And just because you're a freak, you don't have to let the whole world know it. My church friends are even listening to it now. You need to get that crap together and do what you got to do. I can understand it's your job and all that, but you have to go into detail about all that freaky stuff. How you doing? End of message. Miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy. It's really a trouble with a dude. Advice out. I'm having a problem with my fiancé and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, always drama. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Fax Wendy at 866-WENDY-FAX. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, right now, it's the advice hour portion of the Wendy Williams experience. Oh, and um, how you doing? Let's go to the telephone and see what you, what's going on with you all. Hi, it's advice hour. How can I help you? Hi, Wendy. Hi. Hi. Wellington Carrington Matuma. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. I see you listen. Uh, I got a question for you. Okay. Am I on here? Yes. Oh, God, no. Okay. Well, here's my situation. <laughs> One of the guys that you wrote about in your first book, he's mm-hmm. in the same industry as you. We're, we've been together for about four years. Okay. And I'm in a predicament where I've, I've got my own established career. Mm-hmm. Well, impending career I'm going through uh, medical school and he wants to move back to his home country in the Caribbean and he's asked me to move back with him and I'm not quite sure what I should do because there's like a very huge age difference between us so I don't know how feasible that is uh, first of all, you've got my head spinning because I'm trying to figure out which one of my colleagues um, yeah. was was fortunate enough to land such a smart woman as opposed to, you know, landing somebody off the request line or, you know. Yeah. Guys in my industry are notorious for meeting women in the weirdest, strangest of places. Yeah, I guess you did meet in the weirdest, strangest of places. Where'd you all meet? I'm not a weird, strange person. Yeah, I was going to say, but you want to know what? Things happen because I would have never thought that I would have ended up marrying some man that I met in a club. But that's how, you know, I met my husband. Mm-hmm. So stranger things happen. But, um, okay, what is your age difference? Um, about the close to 40 years. Okay. Is he still lucrative in what he does? I, I He wants to get out of his current career and he wants to do something totally new, I guess. He just wants to go back 
uh, home and retire. Uh uh-uh. uh, and uh uh uh, because like I've lived on, I lived on the island of Saint Croix, and um, Goose is in the studio, and Goose is from Trinidad. <clears throat> Hi, Goose. I don't. Hello, I don't. I don't think that I would be saying the wrong thing, Goose, to say. If you have the choice to practice your medicine and get your dollar on and your medical on here in this country, then you do it in, as far as I'm concerned, the greatest place in the world, the United States. We have warts and all, but if you don't like it, then 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 go someplace. You know, this is like, I say stay here. And the fact that you're with somebody who wants to retire and he wants to take you to re- the land of retirement, I mean, you'll have to make a choice as far as your romantic life. But career-wise, <laughs> goose. No, she should stay here. She should stay here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh. To practice her medicine. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. So, what are you gonna yeah. do? What are you gonna do about your love? Um, I I don't know. It's 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 been four years invested time, and I I know that you know it's it's not going to end in marriage, which is what neither of us want because we've both been previously married. Okay. But um, you know it's it's an it's an option I'm looking into because I can also practice where he he's from. You know, I I could if I I wanted to, but I I, I don't want feel to that inclination to pack up and and leave and you know leave what I've had here. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Go. How old are you? I'm sorry. How old are you? I'm in my twenties, mid twenties. Girl, stay here. What are you out of your mind? Yeah, no, stay here. You know, think about practicing over there at another time in life, maybe. Of course, at that point, you won't be with him because when you tell him that you're going to stay, he's probably going to leave you. But you're in your mid-20s. You, you've invested all this time in, in higher education. Don't blow it. Don't blow it. And, it's, and at some point, a woman does want a personal life, and you might regret it, but that's just the chance you're going to have to take. Okay. All right. All righty. Take care, doctor. Thanks. Love your show. Bye-bye. Bye. Shout out to all the DR periods. You know, I I don't know why I've always been, um, I just, I've always had the highest respect for you all. You know, as if, you know, nothing else counts when you go to school unless you're a doctor. But in my mind, like doctors, I, I mean, even lawyers, you can damn near try your own damn case. You just need somebody with the official licensed practice to work it for you. I mean, hell. You know what I mean? But a doctor, boy, that's something special there. And maybe it's because I'm a hypochondriac. I, I revere doctors. And I, I run into a lot of behind-hole doctors also. Don't get me wrong. But, boy, do I revere them. Hello? Hi, Wendy. Hi. I am one to, first of all, say congratulations on your result. Oh, thank you. And when I get home in another hour, I will be having some brown juice on you. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> now, I couldn't reach my sister, my biological sister or whatever, because she's working two jobs or whatever, and she's busy. Okay. So I called the next best thing, which is my sister in my head, which is my Wendy. Oh, thank you. I have a problem. Mm-hmm. My daughter will be 16 in December. Okay. She's running amok. She oh. is skipping school. Me and you live in the same town. Okay. And they don't play around. No. They called me in at work and told me that she have to, if she missed school one more time, Uh-oh. then they're going to kick her out. Oh, gosh. Oh. I would live. I used to live in a heart of North like 10 years ago. Right. And I bust my butt to get to where I'm at. Yes. To help her to get a better school. Of course. My, I'm, I need your advice. What should I do? Taking her cell phone away doesn't work. The email, the computer, all that does not work. I need your help. Hello. Can you? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm so. Uh, conf- uh, you know. Can you beat her behind? Can you? Can you crack her skull? No, because you know the town that we live in, we will be going to jail. Yeah. I live right around the corner from the police, so that would oh. be a good idea. Oh, gosh. You know what? Um, is there something troubling her? Is, you know, I mean, I mean, I remember what 16 is like, so, you know, and you remember what 16 is like, too. It's just that, uh, now, are you a single mom? Um, no. Um, I live with um, my fiancé for the past, what? four years we've been together for 11 years so he has been a big part in her life okay and so how she look at him as a dad or whatever okay he's ready to be her butt but we can't do that right 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 um i mean 
was damn short of driving her to school every day and, and, and picking her up there every day. And even then, she can leave school and then come back at the appointed pickup place. I don't have a suggestion for you. Maybe somebody else does. God, because I, I haven't been through this yet, and I wasn't an unruly teenager. This is, I don't have an experience in this at all. So, so you think you're so lucky much. stars that you have a little boy. Well, this is what I was going to say, though, Goose. I was going to say counseling, but you know what? I don't. Is, will counseling help? Sometimes, yeah. Well, you know what? Then the counseling that you should get her should be between, um, the, two between the two of you, and then she should have a day where she can talk to the counselor without you. Okay. So, you know, like, if she goes to counseling once a week, every other week it's the two of you, and then maybe every other week from that it's just her by herself, because then you can pick the counselor's brain since you're the one paying the bill. Okay. You know, and find out what's really going on in your daughter's mind. That'll help you better connect with her. In addition, I know you're working and I know that you're busy. Do you, do you have any more time? Are you stretched to the gills? Do you have any more time for your daughter? Other than me quitting my job and that wouldn't be a good no. idea or whatever. Are you afraid of her? No, I'm not afraid of her. I was okay. ready to, matter of fact, last night I was ready to fight her. Okay. And I, I was telling her I wanted her to hit me. I want you to hit me, so when you hit me, I had the right to defend myself. Have you ever explained to her how you did live in Newark and, and where you came from and that you, you know, your goal was to provide better for her? She, already, she knows all that. Now, have you ever given it to her in the tier, in the tier reform? Yes. Been there, done that. Ooh, that's a cold one that you have. Ooh. So if any of your listeners, I'm going to also take your advice or whatever, have any yeah. additional, you know, <clears throat> help, advice for me or whatever, or they've been through the same situation or whatever, if it's possible that I can give you my number on the back end or whatever, I need some type of help. Okay, and we will say, um, everybody, um, in addition, if you happen to be from the Montclair um, community, if there's anything that you know of, any place where this woman can uh, can take her daughter locally, that would be appreciated as well. I love you so much, oh. Wendy. Thank you so God. much. Now uh, I'm so happy for you and your results. Oh, well, please. Tomorrow, I hold another problem. I mean, you know, happiness only lasts for a day in this lifetime, doesn't it? You're absolutely right. Because tomorrow, the next, the other shoe drops. It's something else. <laughs> we'll be celebrating tomorrow too about that news tomorrow. No, so I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about just in general. You know? Oh, yeah, that's true. You solve your problem with your daughter, and you're gonna have something the next day. Okay. I'm not saying that's how life is. You're right. All right. All right. So, um, can I give it to you on the back end? Uh, yes. Hold on a moment. Shaylin's going to take your information. Hold Thank on. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. Um, I'll take somebody else. And then Shaylin, um, after I finish talking, then you can... Actually, you can pick up the phone in there and take that woman's information. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hello? Oh. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Welcome to Advice Hour. What's up, Wendy? How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you, sir. I just want to, uh, help that young lady out with the trouble with her daughter. Okay. Because, number one, I have a 13-year-old son. Mm -hmm. First of all, she needs to check the company that her child is being around. Yes, that's good. Because, number one, you know, they can be, you know, influencing her to do a lot of that stuff that she's doing. Very true. Not that, two, but, that, but she, can't, she can't pull her kid away from those people because, you know, kids don't listen. Exactly. My son didn't listen neither until I tightened him up. And then there's a lot of stuff that he, I'm you know, down. that she wants. And she's probably not giving it to her because she's probably missing something in our life. Well, that's why I was saying, can you squeeze any more time out to spend with, with your daughter? Yeah, basically but, that's what it is. Yeah. She needs to spend like more time with her daughter. She, it's like she got to cut her life out to see what her daughter is missing. Yeah, take out, take some hours or out of your work schedule or something. Do something. Yeah. 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 Well. All right. Well, thank you, sir. You're welcome, Wendy. You have a good day. Bye-bye. sweetie. Hi, it's Advice Hour, and you're on the radio. How can I help you? Hey, Wendy, how are you? Mm, fine, thanks. You don't sound too well. What's the matter? Oh, no, please. I found out I don't have thyroid cancer about two hours ago. I'm going to live, honey. I'm waiting are you serious? Oh, yes, I had a biopsy today. Five needles in my throat. Ooh. And I sat in the waiting room rocking back and forth and wringing my hands and scratching my head because that's what I do when I'm nervous, waiting for the results. You you know, you kill yourself doing that yeah, every but, time. But I'm going to live. Yeah, you are. And you I, got some, I got some I got some Dom P in the in the radio station refrigerator, and I ordered sushi for me and my whole squad, Ooh. including market price oysters. No, and I don't and I don't care what the bill is for today. I'm gonna live. Yeah, you you have to. You That's have right. Present, perhaps you don't have it for tomorrow. Who it, knows? You might not make it. Exactly. Call in to inquire about that little girl that is giving her mother a problem. Okay. Tell her mom to get some boxing gloves. Just take it to the mitts. <laughs> 
first of all, they think that they're your peer after oh, a while. Oh, God. But do they think that because that's the way we as mothers present ourselves? Well, you know what? I think you have to have that line drawn at a certain point. Okay. And I have a 15-year-old. Okay. And, um, yeah, we have gone there. We argue. Is that a girl that you have? Yes, I do. Do you know? I'm in the same building as you, Wendy. Me and you have rode up on the elevator once or twice and spoke, but I don't think you will remember who I was. Oh. Anyway, tell her get some boxing gloves. Look, do you or do you know your daughter's core friendship group for the most part? Mainly, she does a lot of activities pertaining to school. Okay. I'm very tight knit with the people that work in their office. Okay. They pretty much know me. Okay. So anytime something goes on. They know what to do. So, uh, apart from the boxing gloves, she should be more involved with this yeah. young girl's life. I mean, I even work, I work where you're at. Yeah. My daughter goes to school in Upper Manhattan. Yeah. I even take a lunch break, and I will ride uptown just to show my face. Oh. I mean, I don't know whether she has that time limited, you know. Right, she right. might not have that. Right. With them. Some people only get a half an hour or but, so. But I think everybody gets what you mean. Yeah. Squeeze out an extra ounce for your daughter. Just to show them that, you know what, well, I can be at any place at any time. <laughs> you know, because and sometimes maybe that's what they need down. to know. Yes. You know, okay, you might play hooky, but you don't know what I'm going to show up. Right. You know, you just have to make it to where, you know, you got to put a little bit more that's fear good. into them. That's good. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for calling. No problem. Take you care. Have a good day. Take care. And you too. Bye bye. Well, Advice Hour is still on, and um, apparently we're going into some sort of break, and uh, the lines will still be open, and we'll still be here, God willing. I'm going um, to get my champagne. It should be cold right about now. Hold away from me. It's windy, man. You never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been in my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me, but talk about me. Watch what you say. That's all, baby girl. That's all I'm asking you is watch what the f you say. The Wendy Williams Experience. Yo! Today's R&B and Classic Soul, 107.5 WBLS. The Wendy Williams Experience is here until 7 o'clock. And you know what? I was partially right in talking about our author friend who's coming in today, Benildi Little. Yes, she does have a book out. It's called Good Hair. But the book that she's coming, the novel that she's coming to promote today is called Who Does She Think She Is? Now, I will let you know before she gets here that Benildi Little um, is a, a, um, has written three other novels. The first, uh, I don't know the order of them, I won't say, but there's one called Good Hair, one's called The Itch, and one is called acting out. So this is her fourth one. This woman is seasoned. I mean, she at one point was the senior editor at Essence Magazine. <clears throat> Benildi was also the, the contributing editor, one of them over at Heart and Soul Magazine. Um, she was a reporter for People Magazine and um, she's written articles for InStyle and Allure Magazine and now she's a full-time novelist, so it's great. So she's got this book out. It was actually released back in the spring and it's called Who Does She Think She Is? And the plot is about three women and the sacrifices that they've made for love. And it explores the relationship between mothers and daughters, the love, the resentment, the drama. <laughs> so I look forward to talking with her, and I hope you will uh, be here in the 4 o'clock hour as we entertain author Benildi Little. She'll be here on the show. I like Great. The, I like the name. Benildi. Yeah, it's different, right? And then a little, yeah. Yeah, Benildi Little. So anyway, um, it's still advice hour here on the show, and I'll be glad to come to the phone and see what's going on with you all. Hello. Hi, Wendy. Hi. How are you, honey? This is uh, Alex from Bridgeport. How are you? Hi, Alex. I'm so glad everything went well today, and I wish you well for tomorrow, too. Thank you, Alex. Hey, I have a quick question for you. Okay. Um, I've been with my partner for about almost six years. It'll be in January, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And um, they just passed a law in Connecticut as of October 1st for the same-sex marriages where they're, you know, approved, basically. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and um, we were thinking about doing a little something for next summer. Yeah. However, um, he just, uh, his benefits are going to start kicking in in January. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he has better benefits than his insurance. His, you know, his plan is better than mine. Mm -hmm. So I would say now we're forced to actually do everything sooner than what we thought. Okay. What would you suggest? Because, I mean, I, I wanted to, I always wanted to have, like, a party and have my friends over and everything. However, that's probably not going to be, you know, well, it's so soon. So, I mean. 
So, well, here's my thing. And you know I'm not big into the pomp and circumstance of a wedding. I'm more into concentrating on making the marriage work. Exactly. So you're totally asking the wrong person. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you know, you can open a case of champagne at you all's house, mm. invite a few friends over, and save the money for, exactly. for you guys and to buy yourself something, whether it's a house or a new car or save it for your retirement or something like that. Yeah, actually, he's buying a brand new car, too, in February, so, and we're going away. So um, would it be tacky if I invited? like a couple of like close friends and family to maybe like our the, our neighborhood club where we usually go to? No, I, I think yeah. it'd be great. I think if you want something a little bit more intimate, maybe you can invite them to a restaurant that could accommodate, you know, 25 people or however many and you kind of all sit around and you drink and you have fun. I mean, a club is nice, but a club, you know, it's not really your party. It's everybody else in there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, being, I was just going to ask if maybe, you know, they could reserve a spot for me and maybe just have that part suited for us. That would be fun. It. That would be fun. My girlfriend yeah. Lisa loves to do things like that. Yes, that yeah. would be fun. Okay, thank you. And one more question. Uh -huh. That Corinne character, character from Top Model yesterday, I uh -huh. only watched it yesterday because I wanted to see who the transvestite was. Is uh -huh. that her? I didn't watch. I I don't. I'm not. I don't watch Top Model like I used to. It, yeah. You know. Yeah. No. But I, I remember you talking about that uh, transvestite, and I was like, I saw it yesterday on, and there was nothing to watch. So I just watched it for that purpose. Yeah, and I but forgot. I, I forgot the name of the the um, one that they say has the tranny look. By mm -hmm. the way. That story blew up and quickly went away. It's almost like Tyrese people plant these kind of things to make us yeah, watch. Yeah, I, I, I really didn't believe it either. And yeah. then yesterday watching it, I really couldn't pick out, you know, in the, in the credits of yeah. each picture, I couldn't you know, pick out who it was. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Hey, by the way, everybody, Tyra Banks is the new uh, face of Lens Crafters. So, you know, while you sit and maybe don't understand how it's going down, the woman is making it happen for herself. Alex, thank you for calling. All right, honey, I love you. Happy Take wedding. Tomorrow. Thank you. Happy bye -bye. wedding in advance. Bye-bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, I'm calling to give advice about the young um, woman with the daughter. Yeah. Okay, for her county, where she's from, there's a... Um, she can call family crisis intervention. Ooh. And because I work for Youth Consultation Services okay. of Hudson County. Okay. And we're statewide. And what she could do is she can call family crisis for her county, which is Essex County, and mm -hmm. they have one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what they'll do is they'll offer counseling. And if she feels the daughter needs to be displaced for, say, two weeks mm -hmm. to get it together, they'll take the daughter out of the home and she'll be placed somewhere. Ooh, so drastic. And she'll get visitation and they'll go through counseling. Mm, that so is that's so drastic, option. but, you know. <laughs> that's an option. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for calling. Okay, thank you. Have a wonderful Goodbye. day. You too. All right, everybody. A quick reminder that WBLS is one of the proud sponsors of the GED Connection. You can get some extra help while you're watching the GED Connection on Channel 13. It airs every Tuesday and every Thursday at 6 a.m. And it repeats at 12.30 p.m., okay? And don't forget, the place to be tonight is the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience at the Laugh Factory. All roads point to the Laugh Factory tonight, 42nd Street and 8th Avenue. Me and Artie and Capone, Ken Black, and all the other comedians and the bartenders and, and Ray with the food. We'll all see your face at the Laugh Factory tonight. Okay. All right. We're going to continue. I'm here until 7 o'clock. It's 107.5 WBLS. Yo, what up? This is John Legend. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your man, Montel Jordan. Hey, what's up? This is Eric Benet, and you are listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Yes. So we're still rolling here. Thanks, everybody, for being here. We are smack dab. Well, actually, we're towards the end of Advice Hour, but um, let's go to the telephone and see if we can help some people. Hello. Hi. You're on the radio. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Hi, I have a question. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, um, I just need some advice about a relationship I was in for four years. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Um, I was with this guy for four years, and I have a younger daughter, and I was going back and forth between my new boyfriend and my daughter's father. Mm-hmm. So now my boyfriend's upset with me because... This is kind of like an ongoing thing. Okay. And, and last night he broke up with me. So do you think uh, that I should get back with him or should I just leave him alone? Um, well... My knee-jerk reaction is to leave him alone because handling the welfare of your daughter is your most important thing. Yeah. But this is something that you're going to have to deal with for the rest of your life, so you're going to need a man who's more supportive of you dealing with it. However, what is the drama going on with her father? Well, he, 
he really into taking care of his daughter. And my boyfriend at the time, um, he was in college and he was living at home with his mom. Uh oh. And I'm about two years older than him, and I've been on my own since I had my daughter. This doesn't sound like the right kind of guy for you, and I'll tell you why. Um, because the two-year age difference is not a big deal, but it becomes a huge deal based on responsibilities that one has in their life. And so for you, although you're only chronologically two years older than him, because you have the responsibility of a daughter um, or, you know, of a child, uh, you, you are much older than him. And he's okay. still living at home with his mother, whereas you're yes. used to being out on your own. This wasn't the right suitor for you to begin with. This was some. This was this. Sh he should have been left um, on the side of the bed with the with the used condom. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I he do. he sounded like a, a, a somebody you know to you know get your groove on with, and and maybe go to the movies with, but not a keeper. Okay. Because we we've been trying to work everything out. Pardon me. I'm going to live. It just seems like it's. Nothing is working because he's still harping on everything in the past. Mm -mm. Leave him alone. Okay. Yeah, leave Thanks. him alone. Take okay. care. Bye bye. Thank you. And by the way, she's really lucky because she's at least got a baby's father who is really into taking care of his child. Hello. Hi, this is Kim. How are you? Hi, Kim. Doing well. I want to give the lady advice about um, dealing with her daughter because I was that unruly teenager and my mom didn't play. Okay. Okay, what she needs to do is first strip her room down, take everything mm. away from her, from her clothes to her maxi pad, take Ooh. it away. Ooh. Give her like three pair of jeans, some tennis shoes, some socks, and some white t-shirts. Mm -hmm. Her purse, all that, take it away. Okay. Do not talk to her. Do, do not talk to her. Communicate her when you need to. And if she has any PTO time she can take from work, you need to embarrass her the way she embarrasses you. Ooh. You go to school with her all day in your robe and your house shoes and your newspaper. Stick with your child all day. They will straighten her up quickly. Ooh, that, that sounds like a definitely gangster move, but thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Hey, depending on how unruly the 16-year-old girl is, <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> Not the robe and the house shoes, Ma. <laughs> Damn, what's it going to take for you to take that off? It's going to take for you to be good. Hello? Hey, Wendy, how are you? Hi, welcome to Advice Hour. I'm, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. I'm 24, and my boyfriend is 28. Um, first, I have to tell you that we, we have a really good relationship. Like, that's my best friend. We've been through a lot of problems, um... Uh, miscarriage and pregnancy. We've been through all the ch cheating and, and we, went, we went through all that. And right now, our relationship is in a good place. But the problem is, like I said, I'm 24. He's 28. I work. He doesn't. Mm -hmm. I don't have any kids. He does. I live at home. I live on my own. He lives at home. Okay. And it's like, you know, I love him, but then... <clears throat> I'm pulling in between like, damn, am I supposed to stay with him and, and believe all his promises? Is, Mom, if I had it, I'll give it to you. Okay, how long have you been with him? Two years. Two years too long. Leave him alone. He wasn't suited for you from the jump. Okay. I mean, you know, you, you know, you have a child, you have responsibilities. He's no, still. I don't have any kids. Oh, excuse me, he does. Yes, he and, has a child, and he, and he's still laying on his mama's couch. Leave him alone. He's got way too much catching up in life and as a man to do. Leave him alone. He's going to bring you down. Okay, okay, but Wendy, e even if I love him, like love has nothing to do. Love with has it, nothing huh? to do with this. At this particular point, you got to think with your head, and and he is not the right. And I understand that he's your best friend and everything. And it's easy to say, Ma, if I had it, I'd give it to you. But you don't. And you're not even working towards it. You're still living on your mother's couch. And you've got kids. You don't have just me to set an example. Forget me. You, what about your child? And, and, you know, I, I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, your promises sound good. And I'm thinking, like, since I'm able to defend for myself and take care, care of myself like I'm supposed to, that, you know... His promises is, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, like, that's his life. You yeah, know, exactly. I'm going to do what I have to do for myself, regardless of exactly. what he's doing. Exactly, exactly. I, I feel like that, so maybe that's my reason of keeping him around. Like, well, that's him. I'm still handling my business. I'm, my bills are still paid. I still look good. You know, that's him. Right. But, but, and then in a way, I'm saying, like, that's not fair to myself. It's, not, have, it's not fair to you. Leave him alone and make sure that you're using birth control okay. with him. You know, make sure this is not who you want to have a child with. This is not who, you, in my opinion, you should be. How old are you? I'm 24. Yeah, uh, -uh. keep it, keep it moving, keep it moving. Leave him alone. He's not right for you. 
Okay, Wendy. Thanks, sweetie. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. All right, we'll take one more call. we got about two minutes left on the break. Yeah, uh, what I said to her was bail. Hi. Ho- hello. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Welcome to the radio. Hi. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm 17 years old, and the father <laughs> of my child, he's 32. Wow. And he just married my godmother. What are you doing with him? I'm not with him anymore. Okay. How long has this been over? For a month now, I guess. Okay. And how old's your child? She's going to be a month on Friday. Okay. So this is all new. And, all right. So what's your question to me? How would I go about getting full custody of my child? I don't know that you can do that. I mean, you only want to do it right now because you're in in the bitterness of this relationship just ending. He hasn't beat you. He hasn't done anything immoral. I mean, you know, in terms of the law, um, who he's marrying your godmother. Yes, he married her the day before my due date. Does does she know that you that that's your baby's father? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know that you'll be able to file for full custody. Because he hasn't proven yet to be a bad father because he's a brand new father. But you got a whole... He's house. not a brand new... He has seven... Wait, man. He my boss came into my office and uh, he basically brushed up against me with his penis. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So I, I don't know what... Well, how can I... How should I handle that situation? <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is Bill Bellamy. How you doing? <laughs> That's going to be hysterical. <laughs> okay, so Jill Marie Jones from um, uh, Girlfriend Show. She used to be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, and she's about to be honored and inducted into the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders Hall of Fame. (laughs) The induction ceremony is happening in her hometown of Dallas on December 7th. And this is what she says. It was my ticket into showbiz, and I'm a Texan, so I have to be there. So she will be at her ceremony. She was also a former USO girl. Boy, she was really one of those showbiz girls. Oh, and before we bring our guest in, this just in. Oh! Cheryl Swoops has come out of the closet, <gasps> banging the hinges off the door. What? Cheryl Swoops is a real hero on and off the court. Being open and honest about your life is an act of bravery. She's an MVP. She was just named an MVP player, and she's an Olympic gold medalist. And she's come out of the co- uh, closet in a conversation with... ESPN Magazine. Here's her quote. Uh Some people might say I'm coming out after winning the MVP award and it's heroic. I understand that. And I know that there are going to be people with negative things to say. But it doesn't change who I am. I can't help who I fall in love with. No one can. Oh, and by the way, how you doing? (laughs) She got a kid too. This is why I try to tell women who call up here, but he's married. He has a kid. What difference does that make? You're right. You know what I mean? Congratulations, Cheryl Swoop. Welcome out from the darkness into the light. And the reason why I say darkness is because it's got to be, and shout out to the entire Rainbow Coalition, it's got to be hell when you can't be totally honest about who you are and who you love and, and who you choose to be with. It, it, that, that's got to be hell. So Cheryl Swoop's, um, damn, you know, you make me out of a... People, if, if more people were honest like this, I wouldn't have a job. Damn. <laughs> I would love to have an interview with her. Yes. I'd call back to Elisa Payne in the office, but she's down in New Orleans. Oh. Our booker helping her uh, little sister search through um, the rubble of her apartment after Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. Anyway, shout out to Miss Swoops. Congratulations. I know that took courage. And um, you can't help who you fall in love with. Let's bring our guest today. Open the door. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Benildi Little is in the building. Oh. Yay. Oh, hey, Benildi. Oh, so nice to have you here. You. I smell a little fishy. I just had some champagne. Oh, I mean, some. Um, it's Isaac, Miss Isaac. What, Miss Rahi? 
No, 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 no. That what? perfume you have on. No, it's sunflowers. Oh, it's very Cheapy nice. from the CVS. Yeah, it's very nice. You know, sometimes you don't have to pay a lot for the little things in life, right? I do know that. I'm thinking about doing a little, like, newsletter on all the great things you can get and not spend a lot of money. Like what? Pull, pull up am, your microphone. I am a queen of sample sales, yes. discounters, right. vintage, yes. rummage sales, uh -huh. cashmere coat from... Um, Fifth Avenue, uh, what's that church? Church of the Heavenly Rest, $25. Wow. See? 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 Everybody, don't trick up all your I money. I want that, want that hat. I heard uh, you talking about it. Can I try it on? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> exactly. I would have it on right now, but okay. then it fit over my headphones. My best friend was here from L.A. just a few days ago, and I pointed one of these out. She says, why? And I'm like... Because they're really fabulous. Cute. Isn't it fabulous? They're fabulous. And you, you can't wear them. Everybody, she's talking about my trapper hat. You oh, can't wear them it. with... Like, like what you have on now is perfect. Right. You can't you wear it with too much coatage right. and all that's that. Right. Like, that's this right. is it. This is vintage right. Norma Kamali. That. Yeah. This is it. Just this Look sweater. That. You look fabulous. Look at you. Thank you. You look so good. That, I'm going to live. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna no, leave. I had one of those little scares, I know. Yeah, a little mm -hmm. cancer scare. It happens, mm -hmm. it happens. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about you. Benilde Little is here, everybody. And you know what? She's written a bunch of novels. Mm -hmm. But her most recent one, and I'll, I'll, I'll repeat the ones that she's written. Good Hair, yes. The Itch, and Acting Out. Right. But your most recent one, which was just released last spring, is called Who Does She Think She Is? And it's about mm -hmm. three women and their friendships and the... They're friends in the book? No, they're mother, daughter, granddaughter. Okay, so, so, okay, and their relationships with each other and the things that they had to sacrifice for love. Right, right. What what it is, it looks at uh, the, the Aisha, the main character, uh -huh. a young girl, 26 years old, is getting married. And she's about to marry into a very wealthy white family. And it's really about the family's reaction because I think the sort of larger These are black are, people. These are yeah, black, Aisha. you know, sort of well-to-do yeah. folks um, from Jersey. Right. Um, and, you know, I think the assumption is that we all want to marry in to white whiteness. And that's just not true. I know where you come from. I know where I come from. And that's not true. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you know what? I think a lot of people that I grew up with probably assumed that, you know, I would marry, you know, yeah. a lot of the white kids that I went to school right. with. Right, right. But uh, that wasn't my, that wasn't my flavor. Right. I mean, great for friends and stuff like right. that. But my right. father, it, you know, he never did anything wrong to make me hate black men. And my exactly. brother, my uncles, my, you know, and I just, I, I. My best gr girlfriend, though, from Ocean Township, Regina, yeah. she married right. um, her college right. sweetheart, who right. is white. Right, right. But generally, I wanted to look at, like, you know, sort of how we respond to that. Um, and also the mother, the grandmother, and their choices. The, the grandmother actually married a jazz musician, like, ditched the sort of proper black dentist right. for the jazz musician. Right. So back in the day, that was a big, even now, for some people, that right. was a big thing to mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Um, so it's really about, you know, we're talking about Cheryl Swoops a minute ago. It's about choices, and people have to live honestly. Otherwise, it's really painful. I don't know how you do it. How yeah. you don't live honestly. in an honest way. Yeah. Well, Benildi, by the way, is a black woman because people are going to be wondering. Um, and also, Benildi is the former senior editor at Essence Magazine. She was a contributing editor at Heart and Soul. You really got a heavy background. Yeah. Uh, she's I've been around a long time. She's written for InStyle, Allure, and other magazines. Now you're a full-time novelist, you're married, and you have a daughter. And a son. And a son. How old is your son? Four. And how old is your daughter? Four and a half, actually. What? So close Same to yours. Right. My son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's five. How old yeah. is your daughter? She just turned 11. Wow. And they're actually listening. Hi, Baldwin. Hi, Ford. Now, um, your your husband, what are some of the things that you sacrifice for your greatest love? Well, you know what? I was sort of um, long in the tooth when I got married. I wasn't, you know, a young girl. I mean, I did a lot of really, you know. Living. Yeah, exactly. All right. That's why I love what you tell people yes. every day when you tell the girl, you know, don't move in with that boy. You know, live by yourself so you can come home, take your bra off, eat ice cream out of the refrigerator. That's right. the freezer. People, you know, it sounds silly, but it's really important to self-development. So I did all that. I lived by myself. You know, he makes fun. My my husband makes fun of my last apartment in Manhattan, 101st and West End Avenue. You know, it's crack vials in the uh, vestibule. Right. Happy. So happy. You were there. You were by yourself. Living you were having a good by time. myself. Living that, you know, New York life on my own. Yeah. And, uh, and then I got married. But what, I had many, you know, many, many bad, you know, relationships. Boyfriends and stuff like that. you know. So by the time I met my husband, it was very, I was very clear-headed, you know? Yes. I had done a lot of self-examination yes. and all that stuff. So it was more like he was very familiar to me. It wasn't like, oh my God, you know, I, I can't say what, you know, well, I guess I can't say it on this show, but you know, it wasn't Anything like else. I was like this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was more like, oh yeah, like a warm, 
lovey, you know. You were ready. You were ready to commit. You were ready to give up some of the things. Because do you find, I always share with women, particularly girls in their 20s, who I'm trying to tell, don't commit so soon. You know, be careful. Use your birth control. Do you find that women give up more than men in marriage? Oh, Wendy. How many years have you been married? 13. Say, but, but you're happy to give those things up, but you can only be happy if, if you've, you've done. Lived. That's right. That's right. That's right. My mother would say, you know, when I went to Howard. Yes. And then I went to Northwestern. I, so I had friends all over. Yes. And if a friend called and said, you know, there's a party in Chicago, I'm in New Jersey, I'm there. Yes. You know, it was it was like that. So my mother would say, you know, when you settle down, uh-huh. you're going to be fine because you've lived. Yes. You know? So, yeah. So now, you know, I write full time. I'm home with my kids. I take them to school. I pick them up from school. Isn't that I wonderful? pack their lunch. I, you, know, well, you know, yeah. It yeah. Is, it is. I mean, because. I'm actually, you know, it's my fingerprint on this. That's right. You know? And you know what it's like. I yeah. mean, it's huge and it goes by so fast. Can yes. you believe your little guy is no. that he's, old? He's going to five. I can't believe it. I know. Because somebody else said, when I said that you were looking at schools, because everybody remembers right. when you had him. Right. You know, and my little guy, same thing. It's just, time goes by very fast. So, you know. But yeah. it's all it's all good. So that's nice. So how long have you been a full-time novelist? It's Benildi Little in here, everyone. Yeah, I've been, um, this is my fourth book. I've been doing this uh, for 10 years. And I was just saying, this is the last book on my contract with Simon and Schuster, and I am so glad to have that free headspace. Now, originally, I've had a book in my head for ten years, you had a multi, you had a four book deal with well, them. Well, the one was a freestanding that Good Hair, okay, and that did really well. Okay, so they signed me to three. Okay, and now the Good Hair. When did that first come out? Because ninety six. Because I seem to remember that like it was yesterday. I know, because that was a really big book. Let's talk really... about it. Where do you get a guy title <laughs> like Good Hair? What, what is that? I know. Well, you know what? It's not what you think, and a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people. <laughs> read it because they thought they were going to get some tips or something. You know? <laughs> but it was really about what we do as black people to each other. And uh-huh. It's about class. Right. It's really about social class. Right. And um, so the two main characters are from two different class backgrounds. There's a working class girl from Newark, first person in her family to go to college. And the third generation, Harvard educated right. surgeon from Boston. Gotcha. From free blacks. Gotcha. Okay. Uh-huh. They get together and it's about you know, they're into each other but it's about their class baggage and what, what the families do and pulling, you know, pulling each other, pulling them from each other so you know and that book you know did really well i think it hit some 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 chords because re- remember back then i mean we weren't talking about that kind of stuff right you know i mean we talk about it a little more openly now a little but, more a little opening. but still it's still yeah. it's still sort of an uncomfortable subject yes. so and but you know again having gone to howard it was really something that was close to me yes i mean i couldn't believe i mean i loved it it was it was a great experience but i also was really stunned by you know the snobbery and and, and the kind of stuff like you know Somebody asked me one of my first days there, not what my father had done for a living, that's bad enough, but what my grandfather had done. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, because it's about more than just the current generation right. in the house that you grew up right, in. Right, right, So that was, um, mm. you know, that was really kind of painful. And and, and, then, and then coming from a very different kind of uh, background where, you know, I'm being chased home and, you know, being called white girl and, you know, because my family had 50 cents more than the family next door. You right, know? right. So it was, you know. Did you grow up in D.C.? I grew up in Newark. Oh, okay. And, and and both your parents, are they college-educated no. people? No, my, my parents are working class, you know, striving. I mean, right. my dad worked at um, General Motors right. for 32 years. So, the you know, very middle, middle class money, middle yes. income. Yes, But, you know, working class and very much like we were going to college. Yes. Me and uh-huh. my brothers. My brother went to Northeastern. Uh-huh. Um, and, what year did uh, he graduate? Well, he's much older than you. He graduated in 76. Oh, so he knew like, Keith Motley and them. Yeah, it was it's a whole crew. Whenever I, and, and my brother was really popular. Yeah. He's fine. He's uh-huh. tall and all that. Oh. And um, really smart and a total lunatic. Just kidding, Dwayne. Um, Hi, Dwayne. Yeah, he, he... So, yeah, so every, everywhere I go in the country, if I say that, they go... They know me as ex's sister. That's uh, what they called him. Uh, yeah. uh. So, <laughs> but anyway, you know, so, yeah, we were all, like, we were all going to college and all that stuff. That's the kind of family I came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. But... But, you know, um, anyway, so... And you aspire the same for your kids to continue the... um, All right, so let's get back to the book, because Goose is holding up the two-minute sign. (laughs) Everybody, her name is Benildi Little, and the book is called What Does She Think... uh, Excuse me, Who Does She Think She Is? This is the fourth book that she's put out, and remember, it's about the sacrifices that three women in the same family... Right, that's right. The grandmother, the mother, and the daughter... That's right. uh, ...had to give up for love. Right, right, right. It's worth it, though. Yeah. Is it worth it? I think Only so. if you've lived. Only if you've lived. 
You have to live. You have to love yourself first. That's, that's right. really what. And know yourself. And know yourself. That's really what I write about in every single book. Yeah. You know, that it, that is so key. I mean, the thing for me, when I was at Essence, when I was an editor, um, and I know you hear this all the time, too, on this show, is, you know, you get these letters from women, and they're all together. They, you know, they're pretty. Yeah. They're educated. Yeah. they got their own thing. And they can't find a man. So you say, well, okay, well, what's wrong with you? Right. Because there's something wrong. And I don't mean, like, something that can't be fixed, but I mean... You need to get some help. You need to get yourself into therapy. You need to get some books. You need to get Ayanna Van Zandt. You need to get something. Right. You know, and figure it out. And figure out what you really want, not what Madison Avenue says. You yes. Want, you know, and that's the problem with so many of us. You know, it's not that, you know, yeah, there may be a shortage, but it's not that bad. That's right. You know, you can find somebody. Exactly. I mean, you don't want just anybody, but no, you can find somebody suitable right. for you. That's absolutely right. Well, pick up the book, everybody. It sounds like therapy in with a good read. Right, exactly. That's what it is. It's a fun read, but it's a lot of stuff in there. It's who does she think she is? It's Vanilla Little. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Oh, I would thank you so much for having me. Yeah. It's a thrill to be here. Everybody will continue gossiping next. Thanks, Vanilla. <laughs> Wendy, man. Now, my question is about the kegels. Why is it every time I try to do them, I have an orgasm? Is that normal? Uh, I don't know, but it must be pleasurable. The Wendy Williams Experience. Listen, do you want to save as much as 50% or more on your prescription medicine? Did you know that millions of Walgreens customers already do? Talk to your Walgreens pharmacist about generic substitution. By law, generics contain the same active ingredients as the big name brand equivalents. This means that you get the same quality medicine for less. Generic substitution. With over 4,700 stores, you'll find a Walgreens just around the corner. And so many are open 24 hours. One more reason why Walgreens is the Pharmacy America Trusts. Literally, literally, Benilde Little, the author, just walked out of the room. We have been talking and kikiing since um, the last time we all talked together here on the radio. And don't forget to go pick up her book. It really does sound like a good one, too. It's called, Who Does She Think She Is? The Things Women Give Up for Love. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so... Where were we? Gossiping? Of course. So, there were many Asian actors attending the screening of Memoirs of a Geisha. Now, that was the screening where Lucy Liu was kind of attacked by the press for never, you know, representing Asian style in movies in terms of, you know, her love interests and whatnot. And um, it turns out there were other Asian people there. Remember, I... I read to you parts of that interview where she was spazzing out on the press. So, there were other Asian girls there also. Ann Carey is one. I mean, you know Ann Carey. She's from, um, it was CNN. Ann Carey is from, anyway, we know her name. She says, I understand Lucy's percept, uh, perception about, wait, hold on. Let me move my bangs. That long? Yeah, no, no, no. I was just looking down to see because I hadn't pre-read any of this stuff. You know how I read. Um, she couldn't be tactful without demoralizing them, meaning Chinese men. Um, she's just not attracted to Chinese men. I understand her position about not wanting to be labeled an Asian actress, but what bothered me was her need to emphasize that she's not attracted to Chinese men. So, did that, any of that make any sense? Did I just clean that up? Yeah. Are you sure? Did a good job. Okay. Lisa Ling, do you remember her? The View. Well, she says, I respect Lucy's honesty, but she lost credibility by being so obnoxious, especially on Larry King. Oh, she went to Larry King with those statements, too? Lucy reminds me of the kind of Asian person who wants to distance herself from the Asian community, but the moment she has to has a career crisis, she comes running back to us. Oh. Wow. The Asians act like the blacks, then. There are a lot of black... Hey, there are a lot of famous black people. Let's talk about it for a minute. Right? There are a lot of famous black people who've gone under... Who've alienated and then gone under fire and had to come and, and and look for comfort and support in the warm bosom of the black community. Mm -hmm. Friend to the show, Vanessa Williams. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember the Miss America scandal? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's one. And that's one, that, that's one of many. Uh, 
And then Margaret Cho, she's the comedian. I love her. She says, you know, I'm into white guys like Lucy, but what is clearly different be- different between Lucy and me is that I don't think white guys are better in any way than Asian guys. Lucy talked on CNN like she was proud to be with a white guy. That's our girl, Margaret Cho. So, Lucy, none of the Asian girls appreciate you putting down Asian men. You don't have to be with a white man uh, and put down Asian men at the same time. Love is love. We all understand that. That girl, Mary J. Blige, she's up to something, boy, I'll tell you. On December 6th, Geffen Records is going to release a new CD. Mary J. Blige's Reminisce. That's what the CD is going to be called. It's going to be a retrospective album exploring the music that she's done in the past that's propelled her to be the queen of hip-hop soul. Isn't that fabulous? Of course, on the CD Reminisce, we'll be hearing from Mary's um, My Life CD, including the song My Life, the Share My World CD, including the song Share My World, the What's the 411 CD, including the song What's the 411 Plus her Mary CD and the Love and Life CD. Classics. Yes, yes. I am loving it. They say, in addition, she's going to have several new tracks, including MJB, the MVP, the song that she did with the game. I like that. Plus, she's going to do a duet with Bono that's going to be on it. That one's called One. And um, the album has a debut single called Be Without You. And that song is a brand new Mary song. So, um, she's going to get some new flavor from Mary, but you're going to get the old classics as well. And that's December 6th, Mary J. Blige. It's called Reminisce. Mm, I would love to get Mary up here on the show. I would love to be able to shout out to Elisa and say, can we make it happen? No. Alas, she's in New Orleans with her sister. Can you, as the producer, take a note? Can you write that down that we need Mary J. Blige on the show? Of course. But I don't see you with a pen. How do you remember? It's in my head. Oh, please. That, it's just, your head's a sieve, just like mine. In one hole and out the other. <laughs> you and Mary J. are friends, though. I figured you could just call her. I haven't talked to Mary in a long time. You know. We are friends. Yeah, but I don't want to call her and say, Mary, come to the show. Like, it's, it should be done official style. You know, your people call my people. I mean, hell, I worked hard to have people. That's true. I mean, Mary's been having people for years. I'm just getting people around me. I will not lie. The little engine that could has been a one-woman force for 20 years. <laughs> the majority. The majority of my whole career. It hasn't been until, like, the past maybe four years that, you know, we now got a staff of people on this show. I have people. Oh. I'm going to have my people call Mary. Wait a minute. I have people. You have peoples. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, the little dude from Half and Half, the star of the show, the Asian guy. I mean, I love the whole cast. But if I had to pick one favorite actor on Half and Half, it would be that little Asian man. John Cho is his name. And John Cho is about to anchor his own sitcom with MC Light. Ooh. And you've heard me talk about it before because I'm trying to drum up business. Can you write down I want John Cho on the show? Of course. John Cho. I mean, the natural choice would be MC Light, and I'll take MC Light too. But damn it, I need John Cho. Yes. I want to meet him. I want to ask him about Lucy Liu oh. and Margaret Cho. He'd be candid. Yes, he would. Well, here's a little interview that was done with him. They asked, how uh, do you like working on the show, being the Asian guy in a primarily black series marketed for black viewers? Hold on. That do feel okay? Yeah. Champagne is flowing over my benign thyroid. There you go. Life is good. Yeah, life is good. Yes, yes. And so he says, it's a great gig. I didn't plan on it, really. But it's really great. I like the people on the set a lot. They're very respectful. I've never felt disrespected due to my race. Okay, I say all that to say I'm watching this dude, and I can't wait for the show. It's windy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams experience. To 70. 
Hey, yo, what's up? This is Junery. What's you doing? No, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? That, that, that. Yeah, that how was you good. Doing? That was good. How you doing? The Wendy Williams experience still rides on. Thank you for being here. So, Star Jones um, and some of her ways have been exposed by, my, once again, my girl Patricia Ship over at the National Enquirer. Patricia, you have been doing gossip celebrity style for years. She is like one of the only sisters who is really, I mean, uh, there there are several uh, black women who who gossip in mainstream tabloids, but I have to tell you, Patricia has been on top of her game for years, and I am proud to call her a friend and a colleague. So, um, Patricia, along with her colleague, Patricia Towell, have um, given us this fabulous article uh, called Star Jones Exposed. <clears throat> and in the article, they explain a bit more to us about 43-year-old Star Jones. Now, you know, the wedding is over, so she's no longer Bridezilla. Uh, behind her back, they called her Frankenstar. Oh. And Frankenstar, <clears throat> these are some things revealed in <clears throat> the investigation about Star. She wants to turn her banker husband, Al Roker, Al, you doing, into a house husband once they adopt a child. And the reason that she wants to do this is because she says, look, Al, I'm the big breadwinner. We need somebody to stay home with the child. And that'll be you. In addition, Star demands that all of her food cans be lined up in alphabetical order on the shelves with the labels facing forward. She also is insisting that she did not cheat her way through losing 150 pounds. She's denying speculation of gastric bypass surgery particularly. However, she didn't say anything about the lap ban and the other kind of surgeries that you can get. Also, and this is very important, Goose, turn the music down. Because as a watcher of The View, you will already know this. Star hates dogs, according to her behavior on The View. But what my girl Patricia Ship reveals, and I can so believe this, even though it's still alleged for legal purposes. They have this dog named Pook, uh, Pinky. Pinky, I don't know whether you've ever seen Pinky out socially with Star in the magazines and stuff. I have. And this is her reasoning for allegedly, according to Patricia and Patricia, adopting Pink or bringing Pinky into the home. She wants to be on the good side of the animal lovers. And she's seeing, of course, everybody has dogs. And, and people kiss their dogs in the mouth and treat their dogs like human beings and put them in Chanel sweaters and, and take better care of their dogs and cat's nails than they do their own in a lot of cases. So Star, you know, in an effort to win over you, John Q. Public, they have this dog, Pinky. In the meantime, they say Star hates animals. I can so believe, you know, Star is, um, well, this is what they say in the article. Star Jones is an example of hard-nosed greed and ambition and how it can pay off. She's over the top in asking for what she wants, and it's actually something to be admired, is what it says in the article. Certainly, she's not been afraid to set her sights on what she wants from life and then grab it. Then they go into explaining her background. You know, she grew up um, humble in uh, Trenton, New Jersey. And um, she plugged the hell out of her wedding and made everybody crazy from her friends to her coworkers, which how she got the name Bridezilla. But um, she's now lost her weight. And she has you convinced that she did it through diet and exercise. But they say, here's the quote, her diet still consists of... A of, of a lot of junk food, only she eats smaller amounts than before. Gee, I wonder why. My girlfriend, my best friend, Lisa Carnegie, she's lost 100 pounds uh, through gastric bypass surgery. She can't eat as much as she used to either. Hey, Lisa, you want a couple of Taco Bells? I can only have a couple of bites. But nevertheless, you know what I'm saying? Star. <clears throat> They say she admits to getting a breast reduction, but she does not admit to getting her stomach stapled. Well, once again, she denies stomach staple and gastric bypass. But what about the lap band and the, so many other? There are about five other operations that will get you the same results, honey. 
Her husband's sexuality has been a big talking point. There had been gossip that Al was gay before the wedding. The news they may adopt a baby and Al being a stay-at-home dad has people wondering if the rumors are true. Jay, do you think? In the meantime, they say she's obsessed about the way she looks and the way her $2.25 million condo looks. All the canned goods in the kitchen have to be lab- uh, have to be lined up alphabetically with the labels facing out. And each time a bottle of chilled Cristal champagne. Champagne? Wait, hold on a moment. Uh-oh. She's going to live. <laughs> I'm going to live. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice touch. <laughs> mm, am I a freaking lady or what? Ooh. It was very embarrassing. You know, I forgot I was swigging out of the bottle. Did I swig out of the bottle when Benildi was actually in here? Yes, you did. Oh, my gosh, oh. I did? Oh, oh, my God. Yeah, you was gangster. How did she look at me? Like she wanted some. Oh, good. Thank you, Benildi. Benildi, I sensed a certain vibe between us, by the way. Uh-oh. You know, the whole thing about, um, about you know, our sons being, you know, six months apart and, you know, that whole bit. Yeah. I could, you, you, who does your son play with? Because my kid, it's like on the weekends, you know, well, I guess it's probably like this with most um, parents when your kids are like under, I don't know, before first grade. Like he's still in kindergarten. So therefore, play groups are not in, in, in that's not even up for discussion. But a play date. Yet. No, not a play date. Not yet. But still mommy and me on the weekends okay. for the most part. But play dates are about to happen. That's a first grade. The kid's going to start, you know, playing. And, and of course, the mommy's just an earshot away in the next room. You know, it's not the 70s. Nobody drops their kid off anymore just to play, you know, until they're, you know, old enough to fight, you know, for themselves. But um, she didn't look like she was judging? No. no Benilde didn't? No, she's cool. Okay, go ahead. Thanks, Benilde. So, anyway... Um, each of, every time she removes a bottle or a bottle is taken from the, um, the special champagne refrigerator, it must be replaced right away. And they say she even drags a little dog named Pinky to events where she knows she'll be photographed. It's in an, it's in an effort to appeal to pet lovers, even though she always said she hated dogs and cats. Of course, her spokesperson is denying. That's what spokespeople are paid to do. Much like Janet Jackson. Okay, let's, let's keep it moving. So Janet says that she's not a mother, period. She issued a, a statement earlier today. She's 39 years old, and she denies being a mother to a secret 18-year-old. And here's the quote. I do not have a child, and all allegations saying so are false. You know, the Jacksons aren't long on words, because if they say a few words too many, then the truth will really slip out. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe it. It's just another, you know, swish of weirdness on the Jackson family. But for whatever her reasons, um, the the alleged daughter um, stays hidden. And uh, let's move on. You know, can I tell you something? Because, you know, I love Mariah Carey. I love her to a fault. I love her to a fault. I see my Mimi marrying royalty. And I don't know whether I've said it out of my head or whether it's only been in my head. I don't even know whether I ever said it to her when she's come here. I just, you know, I love Mariah. I really do. I I love Mariah Carey. I, I like her struggle. Um, I don't necessarily love everything about her, but if you're going to ask me to get on one side of the fence or the other, because to me, I, I don't like gray. I don't like to have a gray area. I like to either be black or white. I love her. I do. I don't like her. I love her. I think that she's a, a talented woman. Um, she's beautiful in in certain light. Um, she's very girlish and childish in other light. Uh, she's sexy. Um because she tries so hard to be sexy, it, it, it to me it endears me even more to her. She tries so hard to be sexy that it's it's like a five year old playing dress up, and it's cute. Now I want to reveal to you all, and I'm sorry that this is not TV. I have to reveal to Art and my band of merry men. Um, I want to reveal to you all a picture of Mariah Carey and the Prince Monica, Prince of Al, Prince Albert of Monaco, mm. and I want you to tell me Art and get a backbone. Don't agree with me. Yes. 
just because you work for me. Mm-hmm. But um, look, how perfect does my Mimi look? That's her. That's her. That's her. That is her. They're supposed to get married, aren't they? Mimi, I know that's who sent you the diamonds. I know that's who flooded your European hotel room with flowers. Mimi, go for it. Get married. She's the next Princess of Greece. Yes. Mimi, 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 that is so you. That is so you. I mean, you can bang around with any dusty mother father you want. But Mimi, Mimi, at the end of the day, I want to see you bona fide royalty. I, I want to see this. This is our girl. Yes. And look, the prince is such a dork. He's so happy and so intrigued. Look, he already likes black. Mimi no longer denies black, does she? He's got that. Um, he's got that bastard black child with uh, with the flight attendant that poked the hole in the condom, trapped him. So you know, he already knows black Mimi. Look, just stare at my Mimi um, art while I get the blind item that I believe is about Lisa Ray. Speaking of royalty, Lisa Ray, Lisa Ray, Lisa Ray. You guys don't move any place. I want to read you something. Isn't that my Mimi? That's your Mimi. She looks good with him too. She looks great with him. All right, listen, here. I got this. This is not from Panache. This is from um, another one of my um, WAG peers, John Mary, who I love very much. Hi, John. How you doing? John's um, blind item is, I don't want any trouble. I promise I don't. So I won't say much, but the buzz that a certain high-profiled wedding scheduled for this year isn't going to happen. They're saying he's a serial fiancé who gets engaged every year and never weds. They're saying everyone knows it's called off but her. (coughs) Excuse me. Well, like Mary Jenkins on 227 used to say, I ain't gonna say it. So they can say what they want, but you just won't hear it from me. That's what John says. I don't know why I feel that this is Lisa Ray and her prince, but I'm trying to think. See... When I think of John, I don't necessarily always think of black gossip, but he's a black man, and, I, and I've seen him do white gossip, but right now I'm thinking this is a black blind item. Now, keeping it black, what is a high-profiled wedding that's supposed to pop off between now and the end of the year? That's Lisa Ray and her, and her Prince of the Keiko uh, Czech Republic, whatever. Right? Mm. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. And you know, a playboy like that, you can see him getting engaged and, you know, once a year and stringing girls. I wish my girl well, though. I like Lisa Ray. Lisa, if he plays you, you fight him. And then come up here and let's badmouth him together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's funny. All right, you guys. They're saying I have a minute left on the break. We only have one more break left in the show. Damn. I got another one of John's blind items. Plus, I wanted to talk with you about Tracy Ellis Ross from Girlfriends. And I wanted to gossip with you about Jagged Edge. And I want to talk with you about... Oh! Shout out to Nicole! Nicole Spence! Nicole Spence! Do you remember what we were talking about in terms of a soiree tomorrow night? I have the invitation. Hey, Nicole. Life and Style is having their Halloween party tomorrow. We're going to that. But I was trying to think to her. There was something else I heard about that was happening also. So we can make it a double header. Nicole, I got the information. Um, All right, everybody. Wendy, man. I have a boyfriend. I've been with him for maybe a little over three years. And he's just now telling me that he has a child out there somewhere that may be like five or six years old. The Wendy Williams Experience. You're calling number 10. No. (laughs) No. Yes, you are, my friend. Yeah, yeah. You just picked up a thousand dollars. Girl, I'm spinning. Who knows? (laughs) You could be our next winner. Where do you listen to BLS? I listen to BLS at home and at work. Let everybody know the only radio station in New York with the $107,000 cash guarantee. 107.5 WBLS. That is your man, Steve Harvey, in the mornings. Come and get this money, y'all. We got it for you, cash. Be caller number 10 at 212 545 $1,000 right here from 1075 WBLS. Oh, yeah. 
yeah. You're calling number one, WBLS. Hey, now. You're calling number two, BLS. Call back. BLS, you're calling number three. Hi, WBLS. Hello? Yeah, you're calling number four. Call back. <laughs> Hi, BLS, you're calling number five. And you're calling number six. And you're calling number seven. How you doing? You're calling number eight. You're calling number nine. WBLS, you're calling number ten. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. What's up? Can you me? Yes. Oh, my God. Hello. Hey. I'm glad that you listen. I love WBLS. Oh, well, thank you very much. And what's your I got to pull over, girl. I'm driving. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> what's your name? My name is Bert. Where are you calling from, Bert? I'm not all Connecticut. Okay, great. Well, listen, Bert. You know, my radio station has $107,000 in cash for everybody who listens. And it's your chance to listen and call in and win and whatnot. We play this game three times a day. And guess what? You just picked up your share of the money. You just picked up $1,000. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Say, now what are you going to oh do? Oh, my God. What are you going to do with the money? Huh? What are you going to do with the money? Uh, I got to pay some bills. I hear pay that. Well, I'm glad that we've made life a little easier for you, Bert. Thank you. Let everybody know the only radio station with the $107,000 cash guarantee. 107.5 WBLF. Say, yeah. And you can be a winner like Bert. Just make sure that you're listening. Your next chance to win is tomorrow morning at 7.15 with the spectacular Steve Harvey Morning Show. Again at 12.15 with the fabulous Mark Jordan Midday Show. And once again with the incomparable Wendy Williams experience at 5.25. Yes. Thank you. King of New York. <laughs> How you doing? Ah! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, Shaylin is going to take Bert's information behind the scenes. You know, that name still makes me cringe. 15 years later, and I still cringe art. What do you make of that, psychologically speaking? It's, it's been 15 years since I ditched that first husband of mine. Yeah. And it, the name makes me cringe when I hear it. Bert, no offense. Uh, Bert the winner. But I'm just talking about Bert the Loser. Yeah. The, the, it, it makes me cringe. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, exactly. Mm. Why do you have to take me down? Hold on. Let me elevate again. Uh-oh. Mm. Bert got disconnected. Hello, yes. Good. So I'm just joking. Oh. No, Hello. Bert, call back. Hello, Bert. Hello. Don't say his name too many times. No. Damn, you're right. taking me down. You lost them. <laughs> cell phone. Aww. Yeah, that was a cell phone. Yeah. Well, write down his name. And um, Bert will be combing the lines. You know what, Shaylin? Mm -hmm. He'll probably be continually calling. We'll, we'll um, um, comb, the, comb the lines for him. Another loss, Bert. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bert, call back. Not you. I know you listen. Oh. Curious about where your life could have been. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no. mm. Artie, you're going to be out at... Um, Newark. In Newark at that place called Dark Shadow next week? Yes, with, with, uh, with an old friend. Why would somebody pull up to me next to a traffic light earlier today and say, beep, beep, beep? And you know me, it's traffic light. I face forward and choose my hair over my yes, eyes like yes, I don't see nothing. yes. Then they get Wendy, Wendy, uh -oh, uh -oh. and say, you know, how can you act like you don't hear? Yeah. So I finally, you know, removed my hair and looked over, and they were like, they were holding a flyer. Yes. And I see your face on the flyer. Yes, yes. So I rolled down, you know, I buzzed down the window, you know, we're chatting and stuff like that. But you just never know. Look what happened to Cameron. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the car, alone, woman by herself, driving along, True. hearing beep, beep, beep. Yes. It's not until you say one day, one day, mm -hmm. and even then it doesn't necessarily mean friend or you know it could mean foe, but still. Yeah, yeah. I definitely don't answer to the beep, beep, beep. No. It's got to be beep, 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 one day. There you go. So you're gonna be a dark shadow with DJ Kwa. Yeah, next next Thursday. Yeah. Old friends to the show. All right, it was Kwa who pulled up next to me at the light. I didn't. Oh, I didn't yeah, I didn't realize it was him. Hey, Kwa. Uh, <laughs> nice seeing you. Yeah, <laughs> And in the true competitive spirit I am, I had to gun my um, ignition or my thing and beat him from the light. There you go. You know. Yes. I've blown many a transmission that way. Wow. When I used to have my Jeep Liberty. 
I'd be trying to race like Ferraris and stuff. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I just have a spirit of competition. You know, let me beat you. <laughs> let me talk to you about LA weight loss. 1-800-448-TRIM. It's 1-800-448-TRIM. Today, I feel like I'm wearing a tent. Today's outfit really is not going in conjunction with, you know, how I feel in my mind because I like my clothes tight. I like them close to my body. Um, you look warm. Yeah, I know, but I also look big. Like I'm look like I'm like I'm trying to cover something fat, right? No, not really, because the, la- the legs. My legs are. That's what I was thinking. That thins it out. Listen, because I've lost. I got to tell you something. Now look, you might wonder, and and you know, weight loss is not really a spot reduction thing, but if you really know your body, then you know where you lose the weight. Like my 17 pounds on LA weight loss, I've got to be honest, it didn't come, the weight didn't come off my stomach or even off of my face. They came right where my bra digs into my skin and makes rolls. Okay. And also on my thighs, like my legs and stuff. Like I lost weight on my legs. And um, thank you, L.A. Weight Loss, for that. And Art, when I put on this big sweater today, I was saying, I think I'm defeating the purpose of, you know, celebrating, you know, the new me. Yeah. But then I looked in I looked in the full-length mirror, you see? And, and I looked at the legs. Yes, And I yes. said, no, I think the legs say I'm not really trying to hide something. Yes, you're right. I don't know. You're good. I mean, if you're going to the Laugh Factory tonight, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but 1-800-448-TRIM. I'm not into wearing big sacks. I got on a big sack sweater today. But th- thank you, L.A. Weight Loss, for um, you know giving me the confidence to navigate my way through the day and not have to think about fat angles, like when I do some television stuff or getting pictures taken or anything like that. I can just focus on, you know things that are important like if i'm doing an interview and getting my picture taken at the same time oftentimes i would forget what i said in mid-sentence because i'm so busy on (gasps) fat angle you know let me judge my body around this way or that way no i'm not lying to you i mean it was my weight was getting in the way of my craft and then la weight loss came along and i lost 17 pounds it might not sound like a lot of weight but there were the 17 crucial pounds the difference between i don't care whether you take a back shot Oh. 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 <laughs> With the camera I'm talking about. Oh. Or not. You know, it is what it is at this point. Yes, Thank you, LA Weight Loss. 1 800 448 TRIM. 1 800 448 TRIM. Um, what else did I want to remind you about in this break? Probably nothing. Well, no, no. You're going to be at Club at Missouri on the 28th of this month. Yeah, Friday night. Yes, at the Comedy After Party. Yeah, What's at Club at Missouri. Yes. So on Friday night, I'll see you there. I'm going to be in Philly earlier Friday. Yes. Jay-Z and friends are doing a big concert for my Philly radio station. I'm looking forward to that. And then I'm going to get back on the turnpike. Whiz up. I'm going to Club Amazuro on Friday night. It's going to be... Look, I just got the results of a test today saying that I don't have cancer of my thyroid. So I feel like, you know... Party until it's 1999 all over Exactly. Again. Exactly. I'll drink to that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'll see you all tonight at the Laugh Factory. Where it's all going down. Artie is zhuzhing up his lips with his vitamin E right now. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm ready, I'm ready. Those lips are shiny and big. Thank you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're going conti- to conti- continue with the break, everybody. And we're ready for you with the bonus hour. Coming up at the top of the hour, the Wendy Williams Experience, 107.5 WBLS. <laughs> Dear Wendy, get that awful bobblehead doll off your website. You are beautiful. Not a good luck. That's from V in the boogie down. I know the the, the bobblehead doll is gruesome, but uh, you know, <laughs> I guess I'm gruesome too. <laughs> the bobblehead stays. Damn you. <laughs> And I get the I got the confirmation that the bobblehead doll was gruesome. When I was excited, I brought it home to my and my son started crying. I said, "This is mommy." He said, "That's not mommy. That's not you. That's not you. Those are your boots and those are your boobs." Yeah, he, you know, very observant. It's like living with half. Those are your boobs and those are your boots, but and and that's your jewelry, but that's not you. That's not my mommy. He said. Yeah, when you go to thewendywilliamsexperience.com, my bobblehead doll, which it was limited edition. We have, like, none left at this point. Um, we gave away the last bit of them during the Hurricane um, Disaster Relief Telethon, the radiothon that we did, which raised um, $94,000. Uh, just under $100,000. Actually, it might have been more like ninety six by the time, you know, they got the last minutes in. But, you know, once again, thank you guys for doing that. And, um, yeah, the bobblehead is gruesome. 
But in a weird kind of way, the more I stare at it, the more I say, well, there is a likeness in there. Art, right? Somewhere? Just a teeny bit. You know, they could have made it more prettier, but you know, we know it's you. You know. Because nobody's bobblehead looks like them anyway, exactly like them. But through the gruesomeness, what you're saying is that it looks like me. No. Well, okay. <laughs> damn you, damn you, damn you. <laughs> In the meantime. <laughs> In the meantime, um, where are you going? Huh? Where are you going? He always leaves this time of day to go. He always do that. Oh, the, we have a show meeting after the show. We do? <laughs> well, a little on, I know we don't really meet about anything, but it's Wednesday and I need something to do before the comedy club. Oh, yeah. so it's not a real meeting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, yeah, you know how our meetings are. You got some issues? No, we we go to the stairwell with Art. <laughs> then we come back out. <laughs> And then we talk. All right. In the meantime, in the meantime, Jagged Edge, everybody, is um, together. And they're going to perform during a Monday night football broadcast of the Atlanta Falcons and the New York Jets. The halftime performance is where they're going to perform the Atlanta anthem. Other performances include um, Dallas Austin. And Jagged Edge, uh, which I said, uh, T Boz is going to perform by herself of TLC, Monica, and 112, and you know some other people. The mayor of Atlanta, Charlie Franklin, has asked Dallas Austin to write and produce a song that captures the heart and soul of Atlanta. The song is going to be in celebration of Atlanta and the struggles and achievements of all of the uh, musical talent that's come out of Atlanta. Jagged Edge is Atlanta, and. Um, they're going to be part of the celebration as well. So, good for Jagged Edge. I like them. You know that guitarist C.C. De- <laughs> Hold on. That guitarist C.C. DeVille from the group Poison. Oh, yeah. You've heard him talk. He talks like this. Mm. He was sentenced to 80 days in jail for pleading no contest to driving while intoxicated. His real name is Bruce Johannesson. I used to think of Bruce as the most masculine name. Alas, I've met so many gay men named Bruce that that name only conjures up gay to me now. By the way, Cheryl Swoops came out of the closet, everybody. Yes, she's free, she's liberated, and there's no more joking. She came out in ESPN magazine. Um, um, a very, very, uh, very brave thing to do. Um, still, unfortunately, there are people who bash and you know make fun and so on and so forth. But she's out of the closet and she's free to love who she wants to love. So we, if you see her um, out in public, don't think that you're spying something that you can run back to the show with. Because now I'm no longer interested. She's out of the closet. So we can't uh, you know have a good time with her anymore. Anyway, CC was fine. He was sentenced to five years probation, and he's fined one thousand dollars. He's forty three years old. He looks a mess, though. He looks a lot older than that. That hard rock living, do you know what I'm saying? So, supermodel Tyra Banks is the new face of lens crafters. You know, just when you just when you thought she couldn't climb any higher and and and, and reach those lofty altitudes, the eyewear co- co- company is launching a new campaign showcasing the designer frames that they have: the Versace's, the Prada, the Donna Karen, and they've tapped Tyra Banks, who's semi-retired from the catwalk. Um, she's going, they're also going to have a contest with sweepstakes and all this other kind of stuff going on. And of course, Tyra, um, is going to inject her new talk show because she's a businesswoman. The winners will receive round trip coach fare for two days and three nights or two nights, whatever it is, to the Tyra Banks show. Plus, they're going to get a manicure, pedicure, and a $500 American Express gift card. So she has managed to not just be the new face of Lens Crafters, but to infuse her new talk show, which um, they're making us believe is actually very successful. And it's it's a tolerable it's it's a tolerable read, but I have to say, like it comes on at nine o'clock in the morning here in New York, and um, Regis and Kelly is on at the same time. But more importantly, I've discovered over at CBS, CBS is doing a fabulous thing from 10 a.m. to or 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. They're rerunning um, they do the Insider and they do like I think it's Access Hollywood and I love it so therefore I've abandoned Regis and Kelly and Tyra Banks because I love my entertainment news. Anyway, that's what I wanted to tell you about Tyra Banks. I think that's I think that's great for her. Good for her. Uh, any last parting words? Let's go to the telephones real quick. Hello. Hi. It's Wendy. You're on the radio. Hey, Wendy. Yes. 
Um, the thing about the Monday Night Football. Monday Night, yes. Yeah, that already happened. Oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank no you. Bye. Bye. Wendy. What kind of man are you guys? Yes. Miss Williams. Mrs. Carrington. Excuse me. The verdict Carrington. is still out. Um, I just wanted to let you know that uh, they already performed. I, yeah, I just was told. Damn, Art. So, Can you please uh, watch a damn sport? A little bit too late. It happened on Monday, and it was whack. Oh, it was? Yeah. it's just, The song is a little bit too preachy. Oh. You know, it's kind of like they, they're trying to, like, make make it. I don't know. It wasn't. This they coming from Jagged Edge? They should have went ahead and kept it as the uh, as the, the Jermaine Dupri oh. anthem. Yeah. I Thank you. Wonder. Thank Call you. And wish you good luck on your news and all that good stuff. Thank you very much. Good listener. Thank you. All right. I love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hello? Yeah. Hi. Uh, How are you? Okay, got to go. Okay, bye. Okay. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hello. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Hi, this is Red from North Carolina. Hey, Red. Um, to tell you I love you and I'm listening online and I'm the guy that runs your fan website. Oh, what, what, what website oh. is that? Art? Access Wendy. What's it called? Access Wendy. That's, that, that's, some, that's some bootleg one. Access it, it, Wendy. It's not official. Some, a some bootleg one. He's on fan site that he but put together. Why are you trying to diss him? Because it ain't the one that's sanctioned or, you know, it's, it's not the real one. It's not official. <laughs> He's a fan of the show, Art. And that's what it is. a fan site. It ain't the real thing. Art, I take, I take fans from wherever I can get them. If he's going to be nice enough to set up a website donated to me, then... then Stop bad mouthing him. I'm not bad mouthing him, but I'm saying it's not the official site. The Wendy Williams Experience dot com is the official one. Anything else is a, is a pasta. Wendy, I also have one site where it says it's a fan site and it's not nothing affiliated with the Experience show. And thank you. Oh, keep it real. I'm sorry, Red. I and I love you for doing the website. I would love, I love you too, Wendy. Thank you, fan. I all mean, right, thank you, you Red. How you doing? I could all tell, right. honey, all through all these miles and the phone lines. I could tell, honey. Okay, bye-bye. All right, bye. Mm-hmm. He sounded as gay as the month is long, didn't he? All right. Look, I love you all for listening uh, today. And God willing, we'll all be back tomorrow. I know I will because I'm cancer-free. Oh, yes. I got at least another 24 hours of living to do. All right, you all. Um, bye. He's part of me, boy. <laughs> See you later. Because I'm saying bye-bye. Good night. Program complete. Art, go to that boy's website, though. I want to see what's on there. Excuse me? I'm so- Art. Excuse I forgot the name of it. And you did, too. AccessWendy.com. Oh, so that's that bull. <laughs> Art, can you please get off the foot website and please just go to the website and see what's, what's there? What's the name of it again? Access Wendy. Access Wendy. You are with you? <laughs> <laughs> all right, you all, keep it here. <laughs> Suppose it's better than yours. <laughs> we are gearing up for the bonus hour. Seven point five WBLS, New York. Let's take some calls from the request line. Call the number one. Earlier today, she talked to radio host Wendy Williams. Dateline's Hoda Kotb talks with New York radio DJ Wendy Williams. Earlier this year, on Wendy Williams' New York radio show. Wendy Williams is a national syndicated radio personality. Jenny's guest tonight. Why is Wendy Williams fast becoming the queen of all media? She made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Oh my Lord, have I ready for this day? That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. I'd ever heard. The Wendy Williams Experience. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS, New York. <clears throat> Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to the bonus hour of the show. Janelle says, Wendy, tell Art and the interns that Janet Jackson is supposed to make a public statement about the baby rumor 
<clears throat> on CBS2 with Roz Abrams. Well, we already got the statement. Excuse me? <laughs> no, no, technically, I have to use the bathroom, but it smells so bad. Excuse me? Do... Excuse me? Technically, I have, to, I have to pee really bad, but the bathroom <laughs> smells beyond oh. whatever. It smells like somebody took it and smeared it on the wall. Oh. Not the <laughs> you mean like that family <laughs> in the 11 adopted kids? Exactly. Right. Not the funk that you hear the air. No, no, somebody <clears throat> smeared it on the wall, and it smells like pure tea-ish. Some, somebody but I have to go to the bathroom bath, so I'm waiting wow. for it to go away so I can go to the bathroom. Well, right now, you're prancing like a sissy. Look at your legs all <laughs> I'm going to go in the stairwell because I have to go, but I'm not going to go in that bathroom. You're going to go in the stairwell? I can't. I can't hold my birthday. I have to go to the bathroom. All right. Well, open the door and let our guest in. She she won a, a contest. Oh, here she is. All right. Just go to the bathroom and come back. <laughs> oh, he kissed her on her hand. Hi. How are you? Good. Have a seat. Welcome to the Ooh, show. Put your bag down. You can take off your coat. Thank you. Ladies hello. and gentlemen, this is Shauna Freeman. Yes. Hello. You know, the Wendy Williams experience um, is no stranger to auctions. And our first auction we, we had, you remember, we met our lovely, lovely winner. And this auction um, was done through the Pepsi Women of Color Conference. Yes. Move up to the microphone. And Shauna Freeman lives in Brooklyn, in the Clinton Hill section of Brooklyn. Yes, You're originally from Virginia. Yes. But you won the auction. You bid $100. Yes. And you're here. Small price to spend an afternoon with Wendy. <laughs> well, I'm glad. And you got a bobblehead doll, too, right? Because I sent a bobblehead doll for the auction. Did you get your bobblehead? Not yet. All right. I reserved you one. I have one. I have one for you. Okay. Great. Um, and so part of your uh, bid, your winning was, you know, to be here on the bonus hour yes. and to get the bobblehead. So I'm glad you're, and we're going to go to the comedy club afterwards, yeah. the Laugh yes. Factory. Yep. Now, are you with um, any friends or anything like that? A friend of mine is going to meet me later at the comedy club. At the comedy club. Yep. Okay, perfect, yep. perfect, perfect. All right, great. So what made you, let me just ask you uh, briefly, what do you do for a living? I work in an area called diversity and inclusion, which is part of human resources. Mm -hmm. And basically I... Um, it's not super exciting, but I basically develop programs and initiatives to help all different types of people succeed in the workplace. Nice. And and so where, what company do you work? PepsiCo. PepsiCo. Yep. Pepsi, PepsiCo. And so were there, was it tough to win this particular bid? I'm just asking. Did the bid start at like a dollar or something? <laughs> I mean, a hundred dollars is not a lot of money. I can't believe you won. Well, I think the issue is a lot of the women at the conference weren't local. Okay. So I would say a good three-fourths at least of the women weren't local. Oh, so. and where was the conference? In Chicago? Um, the or conference something? took place in New York, but most of the women traveled in. Oh, into it. New York. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. they didn't know the Wendy experience or, or anything like that. Well, a number of people said they were really interested in, do, in, in bidding, except for they lived far and they knew they'd have to fly in. Yeah, for it. yeah, so yeah. Was yes. I wasn't worth all yeah. that. <laughs> So That's okay, so the so the so the bidding was um was a little bit easier for you. Now now, what was the second to highest bid? If you don't mind me asking. To be honest, I honestly don't remember because it's been so long. This was back in July. I know. I can't believe. Why did it take you so long to finally get here? Um, a couple of things. I have a busy travel schedule, and oh. then it took a while for us all to get connected. Yeah. So. Are you yeah. are you uh are you traveling most of the year or most of the week? Um, the last couple of months I've been traveling a lot. Yeah. When well, work? Where do you go? I go to Dallas a lot, Chicago. Um, I just came back from San Diego. Now you Mainly it's Dallas and Chicago. No, you don't wear um, a, a wedding ring. You're not married, so you're single. You're free to travel and do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have children? No, I don't. Wow, so you got a man in every city. <laughs> <laughs> I've often that. fantasized about what it would be like to have one of those jobs, you know, that keeps me on the road all the time as a well. single woman. You know, you're whooping it up all over mm -hmm. the place. You can play like the men do. Hypothetically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Women yeah. are a lot yeah. more sensi sensible. Exactly. Good for you. A lot of lonely nights in the hotel room, huh? <laughs> um. <laughs> With the Spice Channel. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen uh, Shauna, you know the show. There's nothing wrong with that. So what we were going to do is, um, I'm not really not going to do anything differently than I normally do during the bonus hour. Um, you be my co-host. Okay, cool. All right, let me introduce you to the band of Merriment. You already met Nicole. Yes. That's Nicole Spence, publicist, assistant, everything. She holds me together. That right there is Shaylin. Hi, Shaylin. Intern since forever. She now works at the Laugh Factory as well. She's fabulous. This is the goose. The goose is at the wheel. He presses all the buttons. Okay. And then this is Trev Hollywood. 
and he is my head of production, but he comes in here and, and, and you know, he's very proficient at doing the button pressing, too. <laughs> and you met Art on his way to the bathroom. We'll be talking later. <laughs> <laughs> she has no headphones. She doesn't hear what you're pressing. Easy, Joe. <laughs> he pressed the boing. Oh. So now that you know everybody, she does need headphones. Shaylin, she needs headphones for when we go to the phone. How old are you, approximately? 31. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Dare you. So is this what the studio, what you expected it to look like? I think I always describe it very well. Yeah, well... I've heard you describe it as being very humble. I was expecting humble is something nice. Humble is nice. More humble than this. So you know, oh, really? Like, yeah. Because but I've it's heard. dark. Yeah. A slight odor. I don't detect that. Oh. <laughs> okay. We're just so used to it. <laughs> there are the tiles falling from the ceiling. Do you see that? Yes. Do you, you no, know? I see it. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Do you see the floor? I hadn't noticed it. Well, this is brand new carpeting, but this is our version of brand new. <laughs> but do you see this room right here? Yes. That's going to be the brand new Steve Harvey, Wendy Williams Experience broadcast studio. It's oh. going to be tricked out. It's a multi-million dollar operation. And this studio right here is getting done to this entire radio station. Did you see my office? It used to be fabulous. I'm moving across the hall and everything. I love the pink. Yeah, it's thank great. you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, but we're, we're in the process of redesign and stuff. Okay. You know, what I love about working here is, is that they, they seem to put money into the things that are important, like the, the workers, you mm-hmm. know, making sure that, that we're okay, at least mm-hmm. from my perspective. Well, from my perspective. Perspective, <laughs> and yourself. and for a radio station, Shauna, really, what you need is a microphone, mm-hmm. a couple of you know dopey songs, mm-hmm. and that's it. You don't need all the pomp and circumstance. Mm-hmm. But what you do need is good, loyal people, and you know they 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 have that here. So now that they have it, mm-hmm. they found more money, and we're always giving away money to the listeners. You know, we mm-hmm. do a hundred and seven thousand dollar cash guarantee. Clearly, you see, we could use one hundred and seven thousand dollars <laughs> to fix this joint up, right? <laughs> <laughs> but they found money for it all. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a wonderful place to work, despite all of the above. It's cozy. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. I understand. That's what the realtors say about a less than desirable house. That I, I was watching on HGTV uh, the other week, and they were saying, "Did you see that?" I was watching it. I'm, I'm HGTV. Only. So when they describe a house in the paper yeah. as cozy, oh. that means dark, dark. small, stink. <laughs> 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 What borough do you live? Where do you live? Brooklyn. Okay. Is that where you're from? From Virginia. Oh, oh that's right. I said yeah. that at the top of the show. I'm sorry. Um, I have my champagne. Oh, good. Do you see any holes in my neck? Do you oh. see any little, a little scar or anything? No. Yeah. I got five needles, not just stuck in my neck today, but they stuck and they probed. You stick and you probe. Thyroid. Stick and probe. Yeah, well, I have, uh, truth be told, okay, this is the rest of the story, everybody. So after William Rehnquist passed of thyroid cancer, and I woke up that morning to see that on the news, and immediately the sound effect from the show that went off in my head, exactly. So as I'm watching it on the news, I call up my thyroid doctor, and I'm like, I want to schedule an appointment. No, I feel fine, but you know, Rehnquist is dying, and you know how I have a zest for life. I want to live. And I want to know about anything early because, you know, I'm going to ride this until the wheels fall off, damn it. You know what I mean? So I said, uh, make, you know, I'm coming in. So I came in and went into his office and he says to me, the nodule that was in your neck, it's been there for a couple of years, it's been fine, has grown a bit. So I'm like, and he says, look, and he's writing as he's saying, and I want you to go here and I want you to get a biopsy. Yeah. So I'm like, oh God, okay. Cancer. And we're not, he's talking around the word because he knows I love life and he sees me as being, you know, happy, peppy and zippy and get, you know, he doesn't want to bring me down, but I'm like, doc, let's talk. You want it, want me to get checked for cancer? And he says, Wendy, you're a beautiful woman. He's going through this whole thing. You know, people rely on you. You're, everything is going to be fine. And I'm like, please stop singing therapy to me. So I made my appointment. He said, look, do this when you have a chance. I made my appointment like immediately, but I had to wait a minute because the woman who actually does the test has to come into town. She's not here all the time. <clears throat> so this morning I had my appointment and it turns out as I'm getting 
all five, I didn't realize it was five needles. You know, they're sticking and they're, they, they need more cells and they're sticking. And, and then the main doctor, the big scientist that's not in town all the time, she's in there with five of her merry men and everybody's qualified. But the main scientist is sitting with the Petri dish and three microscopes set up and all these dipping color strips and all this other kind of crap. <laughs> I'm like, Doc, how soon can I get my results? And she says, uh, in 10 or 15 minutes from when you, you know, walk out. And I'm like, I'll be in the waiting room. And I'm in the waiting room reading the National Enquirer about Star Jones trying to take my mind off my own troubles onto somebody else's troubles because that's a part of what the celebrity entertainment news does. You know, everybody's got problems. But it takes your mind a little bit off your own problems when you delve into what else is going on with other people. That's true. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Fifteen minutes later, here comes the doctor. And she's walking somberly. But then I'm just realizing this is just, you know, the doctor's, you know, M.O., and so she comes over and she gives me the thumbs up. She says, you have no cancer. Oh, that's and great. And I'm like, oh, my God. That's wonderful. I go outside on the sidewalk. I call my husband. I got ready to hail a cab. I decided, you know what? I'm going to walk the blocks. And I was way up on, like, Park Avenue at about 60-something Street. And I walked down to 34th Street just prancing. Look, let me show you how I walked. All right. Do you see my full <laughs> outfit? All right, look. I got on furry boots and some jeans, and I got on a big vintage sweater, look. And I got on my big trapper hat, and I had my sunglasses on, and my bag, and I clutch it like this, and I'm walking. So here's me in mid-walk. Do I look celebratory? Like, if you were to pass me in a cab, would, would I look like I'm celebrating? Or I have a zest for life or something? A yeah. zest for life. Come on, this is a happy life. hat. Yes, yeah. yes. I would have tucked it away, of course, if I got in the doom and gloom. But, you know, and I'm walking and I'm celebrating. I'm like, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. <sighs> so I came into the uh, station and I always keep a bottle in my desk, just uh -oh. like Fred G. Sanford. And I chilled my Dom P. And I don't choose to share it with anybody. So I put my germs on it immediately. <laughs> uh, swigging out of the bottle. And, um, and I order sushi for everybody. I'm going to live. Excellent. Excellent for all of New York. Well, you know. And for you, of course. Yeah. I mean, you know, well, the, 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 the uh, truth of the matter is, is that it's uh, pretty much the microwave age. I feel as though I'll be forgotten like everybody else. You know what I mean? People don't hang on to the greats like they used to. Gladys Knight. You understand what I'm saying? Aretha Franklin. You know, it's, it's not like Frankie Crocker. It's not like that anymore. And I'm fully aware that, you know, people don't really make history like that anymore. They're carbon copies that come up. They take your place. The listenership is a, is a reflection of the times in which we live. Um, you know, you like a song, but you don't like albums. You like a song. You don't really invest in an artist anymore, and you don't really invest in a radio personality or TV personality anymore. I mean, you know, you, you invest in the moment, and then you pass. So it's not really so much great for the listeners, you guys, because you guys, I know, will ingratiate the next person as much as you do me. But it's great for my son and my husband and my mother and father. Bye! You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's great for my family. Anyway, so I'm going to live. So what? I have my CAT scan tomorrow. So tomorrow's a whole nother day. <laughs> exactly. No, but the CAT scan is not the medical necessity that, um, that, that the biopsy was. The CAT scan is just to find out how much my muscles are pressing on my eyes. You notice I have a little bit of eye pop. Just a little bit. The Botox controls it. Shout out to my Botoxologist, Dr. Janine Downey. The Botox controls it, but... Um, am I bringing you down? No. It's good news. <laughs> and I disagree with that, what? that you will be that people like you will be forgotten because there certain people are hard to replace and hard to well you know emulate well I hope just judging from the reaction that I got from everyone that I told I was coming they like, oh, oh, really oh, absolutely and it's so interesting because it's such a wide range of people it's not just one type of listener out there like black women it's it's white it's yeah. Indian it's Asian it's old it's, it's young men men rich, straight men poor, gay men everything in between. Rich, yeah yeah it's a really really wonderful um uh career mm -hmm. That's why, you know, I want to live. I, 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 I love life. Yeah. We want you to live. And you are going to live. <clears throat> well, you know. We'll see.
Tomorrow's another day. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be celebrating today's victory at the Laugh Factory tonight. I will be feeling no pain. So look, the D.C. cops are investi- investigating, excuse me, the whole Cameron shooting thing. Now, you know, it happened on um, Sunday at 12.15 a.m. in the northwest section of D.C., um, as you know, by now, Cameron was wounded in both arms. Um, Cameron believes that the violence was a botched carjacking. But investigators are not necessarily settled with that theory. As a matter of fact, the D.C. investigators, what are you saying, Goose? Nobody carjacks a Lamborghini. Because you can't ride around in a stolen car that's as high profile as that. You can't sell the parts like that. <laughs> Unless you're just doing it to get a rep. Well, true, true. You know, I got look at her. Nothing to lose. Look at her participate. Look at her participate. It's nice, Shauna. Oh, why? Thank you. So anyway, so the investigators have not ruled out the carjacking, but police officials are saying that the evidence and the witnesses are pointing them in other directions. So he was down there for Howard's homecoming coming, and apparently a Burgundy Ford Expedition stopped beside him and a man got out of the SUV and without saying a word, opened fire. In the meantime, there was a pink SUV up at the... <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> um, over at the light that uh, didn't make it through the light and it was full of Cameron's friends. And the friends say, Ow. well, <laughs> no, that's not what the friends said. <laughs> the actions of the gunman and the proximity of Cameron's friends are among the reasons that the cops don't believe that the carjacking was the motive for this all going down. Um, one of the cops said, if you're going to carjack someone, you don't shoot first. You try to get the driver out of the car. You also wouldn't do that in front of people. Cameron's manager, whose name is Big Joe. Hey, Joe. He says hey. that he believes it was a random act of carjacking. And um, after the shooting, the gunman jumped back into the expedition, which police believed was occupied by at least one other person, and the expedition drove away. The SUV was chased by two officers with Federal Protective Services, and um, they were patrolling an area nearby. So the vehicle, the SUV, ended up crashing in the 600 block of U Street, Northwest D.C. The two men in the car were briefly trapped in the SUV, and they ended up shooting their way out of the car through the windows. Yes. Cops said they recovered a wealth of evidence from the scene and were unable to locate the expedition's owners. Wow. So... That's still up in the air. Another thing that is still up in the air, everybody, is who shot Suge Knight? We're still dealing with that. Well, you know, Suge Knight, friend to the show, Miami cops have hit a brick wall in trying to figure out who shot Suge Knight at the swanky party that he was at that fateful night during the MTV Awards. The cops say they've ruled out the possibility of Suge shooting himself accidentally. They've ruled that out. He was shot in the leg during Kanye West's bash, August 28th. He went to the hospital. He was treated and released. A spokesperson for the Miami cops says, um, we just don't know who did it. The cops says that they say that they've searched unsuccessfully. Yo, the looters are going crazy in Miami right now from the hurricane. I was talking to my big sister Wanda earlier coming in. They lost part of their roof. The tree is in the pool in the backyard. What else do they have going on there? Yeah, you know, a bunch of stuff that you call your homeowner's insurance. You get it all fixed up. You know what I mean? But she said downtown, um, downtown Miami, you know, South Beach and stuff. Just the, the robin and seal and is, is at an all-time high. It's, uh, it's going down. <clears throat> Let's talk on the telephone, Goose. Hello. Hi, you're on the phone with Shawnee and Wendy. Shauna or Shawnee? Shauna. Shauna, I'm sorry. No Shawnee problem. is the caterer. Shawnee, Shawnee caterer. Hey, Shawnee. Hey. <laughs> hi. Shauna, hi. Hi, Wendy. I was wondering if you could do me a favor and just tell your guests to take your headphones off for one thing. I'll tell you a secret. 
Oh, take your guest off. Take your headphones off for Mo. Shaylin, come over here. Hold her headphones. She's apparently not supposed to be hearing something. Take your headphones off. We're going to talk about you behind your back. Welcome to the show. Sorry. <laughs> Goose, get your finger on the dump button in case it's something unsavory. Everybody be poised, be ready, and go. Um, I don't mean to be mean, but she's messing up the bonus hour. She has about as much personality as a broken vibrator. I'm sorry. Well, here's the thing. All right. Wow. I just, okay, you can put her headphones back on. The thing, you didn't um, beat that, did you? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, the thing is, is that, um, thank you. Oh, and thank you for calling. Oh, thanks. Sorry. Bye-bye. Bye. I mean, it all goes down here. She said that you have um, the personality of a broken vibrator. But this is what I say. That's a nice comparison. You're not, but you're not a radio personality. No. You're somebody who, who bid uh, for, uh, for good cause, and you won your position up here. And so I still have to drive the show. So if the bonus hour is boring, then that's my fault. I need to zhuzh it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, give me my zhuzh. <laughs> <laughs> Too much zhuzh. Too much zhuzh. <laughs> All right, let's keep it moving. Go ahead. Don't feel any way, Shauna. I'm cool. Okay, good. Good, cool. good. You want a swig? Nah. Sure. <laughs> okay. She sees all my lipstick all over the top of the bottle. <laughs> hey, hello. You're on the radio. Hello? Hello, hi. It's Wendy. Hey, Wendy. What's going on? Hi. And Sean is here, too. Hi, Sean. How you doing? I'm fine. Hey, Wendy, do I sound familiar to you? Oh, boy. Goose. Yesterday. Oh, you're the man with the deep voice from Plainfield, New Jersey, with yeah. Candace and Christopher as your kids. That's right. Listen. Women have been looking for you. Well, hey. He called during bonus hour. His wife passed away. They were married for 15, how many years? 15. 15 years. And his life's work at this point is to take care of his kids. His wife passed away of lung cancer. Right. His childhood sweetheart. Doesn't he sound fabulous? And he he called me during advice hour to ask me when is it okay to get back out there and date? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're gonna make somebody a great. My, my exactly. daughter, my daughter idolizes you. Uh oh. She idolizes you. I mean, the girl. She talks about you all the time. Wow. Well, thank her. Yeah, and uh, she she likes when you shout out to her. Uh, you know. Well, thank you. But with the how you doing and all that other stuff. You know, the floor yesterday <laughs> screaming and yelling. Yeah. Like you wouldn't believe. So you got to shout out to her. But what I really, the reason why I really called mm. was to let you know that I'm very excited about your results today. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. I, I know from experience, um, I haven't been in your shoes, but I have been. You were with your wife. Exactly. So, um, you know, uh, as opposed to what you could have heard today. Yes. I'm very, very happy for you. And Thank you'll, you. You'll continue to be in my prayers. And Shauna? Yes. You hang in there, honey. You, are you single? Yes, I am. You are. Oh, where do you live? Hold on, let me back him down. And she's <laughs> cute, too. Can I tell you what she, who she looks like from the same tribe? Hey, Marie? Now, tribe means that you could be from the same tribe. Doesn't mean you look exactly like, no, Chili from TLC. Brown skin, same hair. No okay. weave. All right. Are you black? Are you Indian? What are you, what's, what's it doing? I'm black. I'm black. Look, and, and she's, and I'm she's black. cute. I'm black. Actually, I'm black uh, you, and with an Italian mix. Do you want to talk to him behind the scenes? <laughs> I talked Perhaps. to him yesterday. Perhaps. <laughs> okay, we're going to put you on hold for a moment. Sean, put but, your but, but you, you, gotta, you, you know, you got to shout out to Candace. You know that, right? You do it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no you, you. No, you're on the radio. Go. Hi, hey, Candace. Hey. How you doing? Hey, <laughs> Thanks, Candace. Candace, we're trying to get you a new mommy. Hold on a moment, okay, sir? Okay. Hold on. Hey, Shaylin, mm-hmm. why don't we take Shauna into the other room? Just a, a brief chat. Okay. Mm-hmm. You might like him. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you meet someplace safe like the Laugh Factory. Okay. Not this week because it's too late for him to get into the city. Go ahead and then come back in. Okay. We're not going to talk behind your back. Don't get nervous. Okay. Put your headphones down. Can take him in the other room? Yeah, no, you don't have to do it. Shaylin's going to do it. <laughs> trying to see block. There she goes. Oh, she got a fat booty, too. You guys are fighting here. Oh, my God. <laughs> easy, guys. Why are you hooking her up with him? <laughs> easy, guys. Why isn't she your type? She doesn't look... I know. Cause easy. We, okay, all right. Hey, wait, wait, my okay, okay, all right. You cringe. All right. In the meantime, um, everybody, okay, so where were we? 
We were talking. We were chatting. We were talking. Okay, Tracy Ellis Ross, I wanted to tell you that she is going to be on hand to host an all-star salute to Patti LaBelle live from the Atlantis in Bahamas. Apparently, while Def Jam was busy dropping Patti LaBelle and while she was busy entertaining her friends in the Bahamas for a birthday party, she was also um, doing a special for UPN. It's going to be on November 8th from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. And um, it was previously recorded, of course, with all the people who attended her birthday party, including Yolanda Adams and Nellie and Kelly and Ashanti and Michael McDonald, Boyce to Men, blah, 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 Tracy Ellis Ross. Is, and it's a salute to Patti LaBelle, November 8th. So, you know, write that down. Um, Jimmy Fallon, who's one of big, her, her biggest fans, um, does an impromptu per, uh, surprise on the show also, in case you're interested. Put that where? Back there. Well... <laughs> I find something oddly uh, attractive about Jimmy Fallon. Dear Wendy, how you doing? I love the bobblehead and I want one of yours. I don't have any more. And Wendy, I thought the whole Lisa... Oh, I thought that old fine-ass Lisa Ray was gay and that that dude was going to marry her and that was a front. No. Uh-uh, Lisa... Mm-mm, she's not gay. And she's not mean. And she doesn't think that the world centers around her, which is the interesting thing, because she gives up all of that whole vibe to me. You know, that widow's peak on her forehead with the hairline and the steely look and the thin, icy, tight lips. You know what I'm saying? And it's a die for body. You would think that she, you know, and she's got her little hazel eyes and, you know... And you would think that she'd be one of those broads to think that the world centers around her, but she's absolutely not. No, she's a wonderful, wonderful woman. I, I really like her a lot. Wendy, I just want to let you know that the posters of Tyra Banks promoting Lens Crafters are already being put up at the Lens Crafters in Livingston Mall. Oh, right. Great. And then happy birthday to um, Sanaya. She's, uh, she turned two on Monday. Oh, you're back too soon. Put your headphones on. No, that's good. Oh, you're still available to Trev Hollywood. How did he sound? He had a nice voice. Did you exchange anything? Yes, he gave me his numbers. And he would like to meet up at the Laugh Factory at some point in time. You see? Now, did you just take his number to not hurt it, hurt the man's feelings? I wouldn't say that. I'd say it's too early to judge. Exactly. You know? he, he so you're really cool. going to meet him at the Laugh Factory? Possibly, if conversation oh, no. goes well. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you have a few conversations yeah. with him or something like that. We'll see. Yeah. Are those implants? Just asking. Oh, my goodness, no. Let's see. <laughs> I never got that question before. Yeah, no, no. Well, I mean, I'm just asking. No. You got it going on. Oh, thanks, Wendy. All right. You got it going on. You look great. Thank you. How you doing? I'm going to live. So, that, more important than looks is health. I probably don't say that enough, <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> Thea Vidal, friend to the show, bitter as hell. I mean, who's with me on this, right? Bitter as hell. That is one bitter broad. Man, she's bitter. Well, they call her the godmother of comedy. I've never heard that, but, you know, okay. She's upset that they've dropped the charges against R. Kelly in Polk County, Florida. That is where he faced 12 counts of child pornography. Um, and the prosecutors dismissed the case after opting not to appeal to the judge's de decision to suppress evidence in his main case. <clears throat> Thea Fidel, who happens to be a life coach on SITV, there's a show called Urban Jungle 2. Do you know what that is, Shauna? No. She's working. That's the point. Yeah. What is SITV? What is that? I found Logo over the weekend. I like it. I spent about four hours over the weekend, if you added all my time together, watching Logo 15 minutes here, half hour there. Watching Logo, I found it. That's the gay channel. How you doing? Anyway, um, he said, she says, um, this is what Thea says about R. Kelly. She clearly thinks that he's guilty. Black people have to stop supporting black men who commit crimes. I just don't get it. It's an ab... It's a <laughs> Aberration. It's a it's an abomination. That's why little Kim is in jail right now. She was lying because she thought that she was looking out for some ignorant Negro who broke the law. Damn. Well, R. Kelly still faces fourteen counts, <clears throat> so it's not too late to get him, Thea. I mean, I'm with her, but I still think that it's beautiful music, and that's part of the war in my head. You know? You, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's beautiful music, right, Shauna? Yeah. Separate, separate. You could recognize the talent, yeah. but. 
despise the behavior. So when Goose reaches up and does this, that means it's, it's time to take a break. Okay. So we're going to go into a break. And we'll be back. We're going to take some more of your phone calls. We're going to gossip, gossip, gossip. Shauna Freeman. Uh, Freeman or Friedman? Freeman. Shauna Freeman is still sitting in with us, everybody. And um, the bonus hour will continue next. By the way, don't forget the Laugh Factory is the place to be tonight. The doors open up at 8 o'clock. The comedy starts at 9 o'clock. And um, Sean is going to be there. And Artie Life for the Party is going to be there um, doing his set. I'll be there celebrating life. Capone will be there celebrating comedy. Ken Black and all the rest of the comedians. Plus, we got the Soul Food Buffet, courtesy of House of Plenty in Union, New Jersey. And we also have um, a lot of uh, drinks. I've covered it, right, Artie? Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, you did. All right. So, we'll return uh, to Burn next on 107.5 WBLS. Hey, this is A. Marie, and you're listening to The Bonus Hour on 107.5 WBLS. You know, earlier in the show, we had the famed author... Benildi Little, and she's got a new book out. I wanted to um, remind you guys, it's out and it's been out actually since the spring. It's called "Who Does She Think She Is," and it explores the relationships uh, between mothers and daughters. It's a grandmother, a mother, and a daughter, and the daughter who's in her twenties is about to get married, and it also explores the things that women have to give up um, for love. And some of the resentments in their relationship and some of the regrets. So maybe you'll see a little bit of it in you. I don't know. But I have the book right here. And I know. But Nildi was just wonderful to talk to. And she um, lives in New Jersey with her husband and her child. And she used to be the editor at um, Essence Magazine as well as a contributing editor at um, oh, I, it was a health magazine. I forgot the name of it. But she's written articles for Allure in style and so on and so forth. And she went to Howard and then she went to Northwestern and she's from Newark and um, she's doing very well for herself. And so she um, she's got this new book out. It's called Who Does She Think She Is? So if you think about it, if you're looking for something to read, you can pick that up. Um, a quick reminder that um, in downtown Newark, the WBLS street team will see you guys on Saturday at the Wisdom African-American Cultural Center. Um, They'll be parked outside for the Kevin Hart, Alex Thomas, and T.K. Kirkland Comedy Show Live. That'll be on Saturday. Did you hear about the mom who went on strike from doing housework? This happens all the time. It's like a plot on a sitcom, you know, every other scene. Hey, Zoe. How are you? At the end of the day, she just shows up checking in on your girls, right? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Zoe. I had to drop off a bag. Oh, a Halloween candy bag. I Yeah, I was about to do a Halloween story, story as a matter of fact, as it relates to um, <clears throat> sexual offenders. And yeah, and that they need to be off the street. In Westchester County, um, the cops are saying that registered sex offenders, they need to be off the street while little boys and little girls are out there um, trick-or-treating. There are about 45 registered sex offenders in Westchester County, and... They're going to be invited while the kids are trick-or-treating to attend a four-hour evening educational program. Mm Mm-hmm. They need to be off the streets. Watch yourself, too, because um, Halloween is also a great time for a home invasion. Ding-dong, trick-or-treat. You see what I'm saying? And put, give me all your candy. Uh Uh-oh. No, I mean your candy. Take off your clothes. You see? Mm-hmm. But, um, okay, so a stay-at-home mom is on strike, and she's giving up all of her daily chores until her family gives her more help around the house. She's 41 years old. Her name is Regina Stevens. And she sits in her lawn chair and talks. And she's holding a sign that says, Mom on Strike. She's got four children. She's 41, like I just told you. Her kids are ages 7 to 19 years old. And the youngest three still live at home with she and her husband, Dennis, along with her daughter-in-law and a grandson. And this woman is tired of doing the laundry, the cooking, the cleaning, and the gardening. And she says she won't do another bit of housework until her family pitches in. Does that really work anymore? If yeah. you go on strike. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No food. 
No laundry. Yeah. Yeah, make her husband get another job and then hire somebody to do it. Help you out. Easier said than done, I know. You hire the strangers, they come in your house, they steal from you, and they bang your husband. Mm -hmm. This person says Patty LaBelle's birthday is uh, May 24th. Okay, well, maybe it wasn't her birthday. Maybe it was like an anniversary for her being in showbiz or something like that. She was, Look, she was in the Bahamas celebrating. What do I know for her? I wasn't invited. Dear Wendy, Shauna's still here with us. Hey, Shauna. Hey, Wendy. I'm living in a love triangle. I'm very openly lesbian, and I'm in a relationship with another woman. Oh. But for... The <laughs> <laughs> see, do you see Art's body language? This is what happens. This is what it is. This is what we, we need. We all need to be on TV. Wendy, please Wendy. read. Please read. Stop it. Don't pause. <laughs> <laughs> but for the past two months, I've been intrigued by a guy. He's suave, he listens very well, and he's very considerate, blah, 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 she puts. The problem is, we had sex. Oh. And it was great. The first guy, Wendy, that's ever made me have the big O. But he doesn't fulfill me like a woman can. I'm just confused because I really like him and I'm involved in a long distance but open relationship with my girl. My girl doesn't emotionally satisfy me the way he can. By the way, he lives in New York. She does not. But if I was to settle with him, I would have to cheat with my woman very often. I need ass and, oh, and she says boobs. Uh, that's how I'll put it. Wendy, what do I do? Here's the problem. Long distance relationships aren't good for uh, heteros or lesbians. They aren't. They just aren't good. She's not satisfying you emotionally because she's not here. If you had her or another woman here in New York, then you would have the best of everything. So I say, leave him alone. You've been with her for, you haven't said how long your lesbian relationship is going on, but you know what? What you need to do is dump her. And find a relationship right here in New York. Shauna, what do you say? Yeah. It sounds like she's not really a lesbian. Like, she might kind of go both she ways She likes to the me. Dilsey. Yeah. Oh. To me, it's not something you could just switch up. You yeah, know? Well. So, maybe she has to look back at that. No matter what she does, mm -hmm. she's got to find it here in New York. Only yeah. then will she be able to carve out who yeah. she is and what she is. Cheryl Swoops came out of the closet earlier. She did. Yeah, today. ESPN Magazine. And it's going to be on newsstands, I think, like like that. It was a it was wow. an immediate release. She came out earlier today in a statement. So she must have just done the interview today, and then they just ran to the wire with it. And um, she says, you know, you can't help who you fall in love with. I don't have the statement in front of me. It's somewhere around this mess. But she says, you know, you can't help who you fall in love with. Good for her. You know what I mean? Good for her. And she came out. And I got to tell you something. Uh, while... I can't have all my gays coming out of the closet. Because you come out of the closet and you're a celebrity, then you make no work for me. You, uh, know, you, you yeah, understand what yeah, I'm saying, yeah, Shauna? Yeah. But it's got to be such a breath of fresh air. I'm, I'm happy for her. Yeah. I'm happy for she her. She has to feel free. You know? Absolutely. So if you ever see her around town with another woman... Don't feel like you're salivating to call me regarding it. She's already out of the closet. Art's putting on his coat... Art, we have a meeting right after the show. You're not I'm leaving. I'm just putting this on because it's getting a little chilly in here, so I don't know about mm -hmm. meeting and stuff. Mm. Sean, are you having a nice time? Yeah, having a great time. All right. Can't nice. wait to hear my drops. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's a woman who listens to the show. Her name is Lady C. And Lady C um, has sent a fax to, for me to share with the ladies. It's, uh, she says, keep these rules in mind, ladies. And this is just from a woman who listens to the show. She's no different than me and you. But here's what she's learned through her experience. Number one. Oh, this is the title of her uh, category. If your man falls into any of the following categories, run for the hills. Number one. I'm taking notes. Got more than one baby's mama is still living with his mama. Oh, Lord, yes. Okay. Number two, got more than one baby's mama, less than three job, and has never been married. Mm. Keep going. Number three, 
always wants to lay up at your place and drive your car, but is not financially able to help you take care of your matters. Number four, if you're in any way taking care of a man that is not your temporary, uh, temporary disabled, temporarily disabled husband, and I don't care if he's your baby's daddy, why has he not married you? Good point. That is a very good point, ladies say. Uh, number five, if he spent more than a night in jail, that's mm-hmm. and that's pushing it, she says. And these are run for the hills. Number six, has been caught lying, cheating, or has disrespected you in se- on several occasions. Oh, yeah. And the final reason, you have, been a ba- you have uh, had baby's mama status for more than three years after your man's child, and now you want to know if you should move on mm-hmm. or continue to wait for another three years to be his wife. Meanwhile, you just found out you're pregnant again. Run for the hills. Wow. Keep it moving. Thank wow. you, ladies say. Thank you, ladies say. Wow. Where do you all want to go from here? I mean, I got two minutes left. Let's go to the telephones and see what people are talking about. Put your headphones on, Shauna. Hello? Yeah, hey, hey, Wendy. What's going on? This is Christoph from Jersey City. Hey, Christoph. Hey, I just want to remind you to watch Noah's Ark on Logo. Well, you're going to be at the Laugh Factory, but you got to tape Noah's Ark on Logo tonight. Uh, you know what? No, no, no. Don't play the crickets. I was looking for that all weekend. All the kids are telling me that is the show to watch, child. You better tell him not to play no damn crickets. He played you know, the crickets on you. Damn exactly, Art. That's you want to come over on Sunday? We'll have some ranch popcorn and look at like logo all day, and we'll figure out when Noah's Ark comes on. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hello. How you doing? All right. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Christoph. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. We'll talk to somebody else. Hello? Hello? Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hello? Wendy, how you doing? How you doing? Wendy, how you doing? All the children are out tonight. Celebrating with you, baby. Congratulations <laughs> on being uh, disease free. Thank you. I'm drinking my Hennessy and my Red Bull. Wow. Thank you. Thank and you. And Shauna, you yes. better ride that bull by the horns, girl. <laughs> you have no idea how lucky you are. I'm very lucky. How you doing? Shauna? I'm in shock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling this Hennessy right now, so forgive me, people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have a nice night. You too, baby. I love you, Wendy. Bye-bye. Love you, too. Um, By the way, you know what, Nicole? Shout out to Nicole in the pink office. Nicole, you know what? I've already told everybody that I'm going to be at the Gay Men's Health Crisis um, 24-hour dance-a-thon at the Jacob Javits Center on December 3rd. But what I haven't said is what times I'm, what time I'm going to be there. Because I'm going to be there for two hours. But I need to let everybody know the time frame so we could, excuse me, meet as many people as possible. Do I have time for one more phone call? Real quick. Hello? <laughs> Hello? There it is. All right, there that's it. Go. Okay. You well, you all, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to shed no tear. I'm not going to die. You're not worth my fear, cancer. You are my sign, but not in my throat. For 24 hours, I was a mess. Uh You ruled my head. (laughs) Didn't tell my parents. I didn't even tell my parents I was going for the biopsy because they, I mean, by now, probably my nosy aunt Marilyn or my nosy aunt Arcel has called up and said, Wendy's cancer free. Aren't you happy? My parents are going to be like, what? (sighs) Aunt Arcel and Aunt Marilyn, really, I love you both. But sometimes you have to learn how to fall back. Aunt Marilyn... I didn't tell my parents about that article in New York Magazine. I didn't want them to pick it up. I wanted them to ask me about it and then me to say, oh, that was a month ago where they couldn't get it. Here goes Aunt Marilyn. Shirley, Tom, (laughs) you know the New York Magazine is on stands, don't you? You know what I mean. I got two aunts who, you know, run their mouths incessantly, and I love them dearly. My Aunt Arcel and my Aunt Marilyn. Damn you both. I love you both. All right, and I love you all for listening. Shauna, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks Is there for any, having it, me. Do you have a website or anything that you want to plug? Or I would like to give Go. a shout out to some of my friends. Go. Erica, Madison, Brooke, Sonora, hey. Saran. Hey. They sound like Diana. A, that, hey. that sounds like a nice girl group. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all you girls single? Most of us. Most of us. Wow. Yeah. And Lee, Lee from Changing Faces, best hi- hairstylist in the world. Shout out. Changing Faces Hair Salon. Yes. Where is that? I've heard of that. It's in Brooklyn. It's They've in sponsored Brooklyn. events of mine yeah. before. She's awesome. Hey, uh, Changing Faces. 
Let's go. All right. All right, everybody. Uh, uh, thank you for being here. I love you. Shauna, yeah. we'll see you later on at the Laugh Factory. Absolutely. Art? I'll be there. Uh, I'll see you in the other room. We have a show meeting. Oh. Hollywood, don't try to escape with Shauna. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Shaylin, Zoe, thank you for being here. Goose, thank you for driving the machine. And, and I'm going to live. Yeah. Thank you. God willing, I'll be here tomorrow for my CAT scan. Bye.